the let's see a special meeting the regular board meeting of uh, march 31st 2020 uh at 4 30 uh roll call please miss floor yes miss yossi here miss black yes miss barto here miss anderson here miss snell here miss matoye and dr navarro here <laughs> oh <laughs> i see Cher, Char's uh, name pop up yes. Is he connected now okay yes Fred, you need to unmute I, I i did unmute now i have to get my face back okay, okay. um uh we had several members of the board who submitted questions uh, miss barto were your questions answered yes i just received this Okay, and Ms. Matoye, did were yours? Absolutely, thank you. Thank you all who answered my questions. And uh, Ms. Anderson, yours came in today. Do you have any? Yes. Uh, did you get your answers, questions answered? I did not. It, one of them was answered on um, Michelle's, but the first four were not answered. Okay, okay and they, they relate to the bid process, uh, Mr. Holcomb? Uh, one is, uh, is there a list of projects by priority on 15A1? Mr. Holcomb is muted. I'm sorry. I, I was quickly going back to look for an email. I did not see an email from Ms. Anderson. I will check again. I'm so sorry. Okay. It came in at 1226 and it was to Mrs. Snyder um, with a CC to Dr. Navarro, Spencer, and Russell, and Sherry. Um, so the first question was regards to projects by priority, but it's on the bid. It's 15A1. Perhaps you can, um, during the, before, while we go into closed session, you can take a look. I, I can forward these to you. That would be I just, great. I just forwarded it to you, Tim. Okay, thank, great. Thank you. I see Ashley's email come in. I will look okay. at it here. Perfect. Maybe thank you can you. answer them before the board meeting. Terrific. Um, were there any public comments uh, on closed session items? None that I see, Martha. Okay, great. So we will recess into closed session um, to discuss the following items. A uh, 4A conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, facts and circumstances that might result in litigation against a local agency, GC54956.9E1, uh, uh, pertaining to the coronavirus. 4B, public employee discipline dismissal release employment, uh, pursuant to government code section 54957 and education code 44954B and 4C public employee discipline dismissal release employment pursuant to government code section 54957 and education code 44954B uh, number 202002HR. Okay, so we will uh, um, recess into closed session. We go out of this meeting and click into the closed session Zoom link. One would like to hope. Pardon? I said, and one would like to hope. Yeah, so leave this meeting. <laughs> Got it. Hi, all. Um, welcome. We're just finishing up closed session, so we're all getting, we have to go out of one um, and into another Zoom. So. Hang in there while we we get the rest of the board um, here. Thank you all for for being here. I see Karen's here, Michelle's here, Ashley, you're here. Dana, okay, I'm still waiting for. Okay, Fred's here. Oh, there's Mrs. Link. We got student board members here. We got a lot of principals here. Yay. Okay, so. 
Sherry's here. Okay, well, everybody is signing in. I will, um, I will make the following announcement. Uh, by executive order number 2920 issued March 18th, 2020, the Newport Mesa Unified School Board meetings will be closed to the public. The public may watch the meeting by joining the Zoom webinar at https double slash zoom dot us dot slash s slash two three seven seven four four seven eight seven eight. Habrá interpretación al español a través del mismo enlace de Zoom which means that uh, interpretation will be available via the Zoom link where folks log on to, they select the language. A report of this action should be read as follows. In closed session, the Board of Education took action to approve the resignation agreement and re general release for number 202002HR. The roll call vote was as followed seven yeses uh, and zero noes. Mrs. Uh, Yelsey uh, moved and Mrs. Black seconded. Our, is the rest of the board on the meeting yet? I don't see that. Mrs. Snell was having trouble. It had been saying that there was a hundred people in the meeting already and blocking it. And so I, I told her, just keep trying it, let me in event. Finally. So as soon as uh, she logs in, maybe uh, Dr. Mishney can make sure she's brought in as a panelist. So she'll be speaking. I will do that. Okay. Great. All right. Um, so we will move to, uh, we have a quorum and I know that she's trying to get in. So we will move to adoption. Um, so um, I also wanted to make announcements so that um, in closed session, we also discussed um, at length uh, school dismissal and the discussion regarding the extending of the school dismissal. And I believe uh, Dr. Lee Sung, you have a statement that you'd like to read from the board? Yes, um, I'd like to uh, formally announce on behalf of the district that uh, obviously uh, everybody uh, needs to know this important uh, decision in terms of our extended uh, school dismissal date. Uh, we did uh, send a message out uh, yesterday that our recommendation at that time was May 8th. However, uh, there's been some new information that was just shared by our uh, state uh, superintendent, Tony Thurman, uh, that had caused us to uh, reconsider that May 8th date. So I would like to announce that uh, the superintendent has directed us with the board's support uh, that we are now extending school dismissal and the continuation of distance learning to May 29th through May 29th. And of course, we will continue to monitor the situation uh, to determine if that date needs to be extended further through uh, the end of the school year. But at this point, uh, we are formally announcing that we are extending our school dismissal and the continuation of distance learning through May 29th. And there will be more information uh, that we will report on uh, distance learning and the district's response to uh, COVID-19 later on in the agenda. Thank you, Russell. So moving on to adoption of the agenda. May I have a motion, please? Move adoption. I'll second. Oh, good. Uh, Mrs. Yelsey uh, moved and Mrs. Bartow seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Floor? Yes. Ms. Yelsey? Yes. Ms. Black? Ms. Bartow? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Snell? Who can't get on? She can't okay. get on yet. Ms. Matoyer? 
Yes, I'm going to try to FaceTime Mrs. Snell so you can hear her. Great. Uh, moving on, so Mount Motion carries, uh, I'm going to say 7-0 because I know that she's, uh, well, It's. I guess we have to say 6-0 uh, with one um, not present quite yet. Uh, moving on to adoption of the minutes of uh, 3 11 20. Mrs. Snell, I have I have Mrs. Snell on Mrs. Snell on speakerphone. Too many S's. So until we can get the glitch fixed up, can she participate that way? Yeah. Can she vote? Yeah. Does she want to vote yes on the adoption of the of the agenda? Um, no. <laughs> yes. She, yes, she does. <laughs> okay. Uh, Seven zero. Perfect. Thank yes. you. Uh, move adoption of the minutes of three eleven. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Ms. Matoyer. Second. Mrs. Yelsey. Roll call, please. Ms. Fleur. Yes. Ms. Yelsey. Yes. Ms. Black. Ms. Bartow. Yes. Ms. Anderson. Yes. Ms. Snell. Yes. Ms. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Matoyer. Yes. Okay. Terrific. Uh, thank you. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, moving on to, uh, uh, I think we're on number nine community comments. Uh, we have a number of community comments. Uh, the, the way this will work, they were had to be submitted by the uh, uh, three o'clock yesterday afternoon. Um, so I will turn this over to, and they were, they're in order. So um, Mrs. Um, Black will read them. Do we have to read the uh, community comment section or can we dispense with it? Uh, you uh, probably need to go over that, uh, but Mrs. Black is not in the meeting yet. I'm trying to uh, see what I can do to get her in. So maybe uh, you can appoint someone else to, uh, Perform that task. I can read it. Can you read it? Yeah. Thank you. Um, following opportunities by by executive order N twenty nine twenty issued on March eighteenth, twenty twenty. The board meetings will be closed to the public. Public comment may be submitted prior to the meeting via electronic submissions no later than Tuesday, March thirty first, by three p.m. via the following links an NMUSD Board of Education comment card, petición para dirigirse a la Junta de Educación del Distrito Escolar Unificado Newport Mesa. Electronic public comment opportunities. The following opportunities are offered to members of the public at a regular meeting to make comments electronically on issues within the legal purview of the Board of Education. Clo uh, community input. The public may comment on the action items listed on the agenda in the consent calendar resolution consent calendar, and discussion action. The public may also comment on items not listed on the agenda, both within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Board of Education. Okay, go. Okay, so um, we're still having an issue with um, two of our board members not being able to get on. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, to allow for at least we know three participants we've got our student board members and we've got julie link here so let's let's move them on then julie if you don't mind um excusing getting off and then maybe that'll will that free up some people we just have to keep trying we'll get them in okay all right so we'll just keep going yes okay so um I will read the, the general comments since Mrs. Black is not on. Um, the first community input is from Hans Huckin Taylor. Uh, he lives at 216 Amherst Road. What about school bus drivers with no summer work option, option? Will they be paid? We depend on working in the summer to stay afloat. Uh, I, Hello. Hi. Uh, oh, it let me in eventually, so. Okay, perfect. Great. Thank you, Dana. I just read the first comment. So the okay. next comment is from uh, Jennifer Arani. Would you like me to read that? Absolutely, please. Okay. Um, Jennifer um, Arani 
she the proposal for ensign drop off and parking lot should be delayed there is a growing concern among community and employees of the school that the, that the can't see it, the oh, banana drop off and the design will actually cause more problems and increase traffic in front of the school. Alternative um, solutions that would cost less and require zero construction is to have three um, dimensional crosswalks painted in every corner of the school. Kids will continue to cross the street and jaywalk even though the proposed drop off area is there. We have to make this work for everyone, not, not um, just the kids that get dropped off also. Also, I want to preser preserve the trees. We need them. If there was any construction, it should go around the trees. Look to Menlo Park area in North, Northern California to see how they preserve their trees. They, they do a good job of allowing them to grow old with the city. We need to change our perspective when it comes to ripping trees out. The right. next one um, is from Sandra Valentine. Um, many parents in the Newport Mesa School District are extremely disappointed in the content of online distant learning. What is the strategy for Newport Mesa to introduce our curriculum and how are they going to improve online learning? As the current system is in place, no way compares with what other schools have implemented in our area, whereby schools are holding mandatory video classrooms and sessions and have been administering um, practice tests on new materials, including high school AP classes. Two, is the district considering utilizing spring break for learning as the students have already had two weeks off and they need to catch up on the curriculum that they have gotten severely behind on? Thank you for your consideration and time. The next um, community input is from Leslie Stern. And she writes to the Board of Education, please consider the mental health of our high schoolers and teenagers. They are at a particularly vulnerable age for social isolation and lack of schedule and sense of normalcy. Yes, I understand that nothing is normal right now, but we need to do everything we can to create that normalcy for our teens. I'm working hard to create structure and routine at home from my ninth grade son, but this is not effective without class specific content, content from his teacher. I have had my son on academic enrichment websites from the very first day that schools were closed, but this does not offer the connection to uh, classmates and teachers that he needs and deserves. He sees this as busy work and not what everyone else is doing. I have an eighth and fifth grader at the local private school and they are in Zoom classroom meetings every day with, with, her, with their um, specific subject teachers, just like they would be if physically present at school. I just don't understand why this is not happening for high school students that we were given um, Chromebooks from the district in the beginning of the year. Our principal told us that content will be strictly review until after spring break. That is fine, but should still be done as an online class with Zoom. Very easy to do. And then it's, <clears throat> it is essential for teachers to hold video classroom meetings using um, established um, bell schedules, help our students um, remain connected, um, accountable, and challenged through the daily video. Okay, the next one, and there's quite a few. <laughs> so, um, the next one is from um, Allison. Um, this is really tiny print, I apologize to the public. Um, Allison, uh, um, it looks like Stabard, 
S-T-I-B-B-A-R-D. Um, Kathy Scott sent an, e an email last Thursday explaining that there would be a bell schedule starting yesterday, but this did not happen. Can you please explain and if there is a communication plan to address changes? Our kids desperately need to need a set schedule. By the time spring break is over, our kids will have uh, missed 20 days of school. How will CDM address this gap and core um, competences required to move on to the next grade level? There is also core material in the spring's curriculum they will need to know for SAT and ACT testing. Um, is there a reason why some school districts are passing on spring break to make up for these days and Newport Mesa is not? These are schools that have been up and running online for two weeks and live Zoom online classes, new material, <clears throat> scheduled tests, et cetera. It seems that foregoing the break would allow the students to catch up on lost time. Um, why has it been so challenging to get Zoom classes up and running when the majority, if not all other districts in the state of California have been able to accomplish them? Um, the next community uh, member is Jennifer Hoffer and she writes, teachers are gods in my eyes and I must make a request. I have a 10th grader at um, Corona Del Mar High School and a California multiple subject of teaching credential and speak for myself and most parents. It has been um, two school weeks since doors closed and yet still today, my son is being assigned work better than before with no um, online instructor instructor meeting. We are ha I'm hearing other schools and districts are having live Zoom and Google meetings um, and uh, for all classes. Sage, Garden Grove, Irvine, um, can we please have live instructor meetings for every class? Can we please use spring break to teach curriculum and catch up? The next um, community input is Dorothy um, Joint, and, and she writes, um, how will the high school kids make up the last three weeks? Why in the past three weeks has CDM only been reviewing work and doing so little academics, especially when other public schools with the same issues have been up and running for with the new materials. For example, my friend in Sacramento has a daughter in ninth grade with moving ahead with work after three days. The kids with no internet could come to the school cafeteria and sit six feet apart, and they also have special education kids at their school. The next one is um, Summer Murray. And for those of us who prepaid preschool tuition, $975 a month, we deserve some reimbursement. 90 minutes a week of Zoom classes does not match up to the big price we have paid for preschool tuition. The next community um, member is Becky Tanawater, I think. And I, I would like to understand the district's plan for providing a structured learning day for all students, elementary and high school. There is a lot of inconsistency about how different teachers are doing distance learning. Some teachers never meet with students and only post assignments and hold office hours. Some meet once a week and others meet twice a week. How are you ensuring that instruction is consistently being delivered by all teachers in a manner that gives students the same level of instruction they would normally have in the classroom? Now that distance learning will last until at least May 11th, this issue is of paramount importance. Students need to have an environment where they're being taught new materials and are being um, held accountable for regular attendance. Many other public school districts across the county are having a mandated virtual bell schedule where students are taught new material daily like they would in a normal classroom. This keeps both the teachers <coughs> and the students accountable. 
Right now, Newport Mesa Unified School District has posted virtual bell schedules only for high school, but none of the teachers actually meet their students during all of the bell schedule periods during the week. The next community member is um, Joseph D. Agrino. Um, all four high schools had their spring musicals canceled, leaving many seniors feeling a lack of um, closure um, with regards to their performing arts experience. Newport Harbor High School has rescheduled their spring musical into the fall musical slot and, and the request of many of these seniors would have the board's permission in the specific and unique circumstance to allow those seniors who are staying local an opportunity to perform in little shop of horrors if you so approve. Next community member. Um, uh, Bianca Carter. And Bianca writes, um, when will third quarter grading periods end? If it ends Friday, 4-3-2020, will students be given the opportunity to improve their grades for the last three weeks when grading and testing were um, prohibited? If not, will a, um, a pass-fail grading system be implemented? This question um, pertains only to Corona Del Mar High School accountability for teachers and students Zoom session. Corona Del Mar High School and middle, college, middle, high school, middle school teachers and students have not been following the published bell schedule. Some teachers Zoom, others do not. Some teachers set a single Zoom session for all um, classes regardless of the schedule periods for that course. Each teacher has a unique schedule or system for distance learning. This has um, resulted in other, in oh, chaos and confusion. <clears throat> what system does the district have in place to ensure that teachers and students are accountable for the required Zoom sessions? When will Corona Del Mar Middle and High School start a mandatory bell schedule? And it says parents, this is her third part of her question, parents do not have access to Google Classroom. This makes it difficult to monitor students' scholastic requirements. Has the district considered parental access to Google Classroom? And if not, is there another platform that teachers are required to publish curriculum with parent um, accessibility? The, uh, member Dennis Ashendorf. Um, good evening, uh, President Floor, Vice President Yeltsy, Trustees and Superintendent Navarro. Newport Mesa Unified historically prides itself on upholding stringent standards such as um, 230, 230 credits for graduation. Due to the social changes one day, you may consider aligning with other districts and setting 210 or another number as the, as the number. Um, considering 80 elective credits, 25% of 230 are currently demanded, it would not be unreasonable to do so. Um, however, another solution that, um, that combines exceptional learning and helping students tran transition from high school to career or college um, exists. Explore the advantages of a guardian credit range for a new policy, graduation credit, sorry, um, for a new policy. Um, McKinney Berto matches the minimum start graduation requirements, um, 13 years long courses or commonly 130 credits. The 5.5 um, proposal presented last month would increase this to 143 credits. Imagine all the students knowing that they had to pass Algebra one in class, not in credit recovery. More minds and efforts would focus on learning. <clears throat> you may think that um, McKinney Vento sets the bar too high. No, it gives integrity and flexibility to the district and the students instead. First students don't have to graduate at McKinney Vento 
and schools don't have to process the paperwork early. It only means that students can take community college courses for free or go to more ROP classes or quite simply stay in school. Indeed, everyone experiencing to attend a significant college would stay, including athletes. Second, after the com uh, completion of McKinney-Vento, students could take three to six classes, each one having more freedom um, to, and, um, oh, diving deep into the materials without um, coercion, <laughs> more learning would occur. Third, if a student required, or if a student neglects, um, school or ROP or community college or online program, the school would process the meeting of graduation requirements. Both the school and the student would be relieved as a result. Fourth, and importantly, uh, morale and teaching quality would improve. People could focus more on the mission of education um, and while helping all young adults transition to the pathway they prefer with the freedom of a case crafted to um, suit them. Okay, Oops. sorry. Um, set a graduation range from uh, McKinney-Vento through 240 credits at either the desire of students or discretion of the school to improve educational outcomes a limit the um, travesty of credit recovery and other credit dr um, driver classes satisfy our willingness to see everyone graduate under reasonable stringent standards. Through your initiative, the Newport Mesa Unified School District Board of Trustees would drive educational reform nationally by phasing in graduation credit range. Okay. I think that Okay, the next um, speaker is Steve Smith. Um, good evening, everyone, trustees. I have three recommendations to offer tonight. Um, the first is to direct superintendent to immediately inform parents that their children may not return to school this semester. The second recommendation is to direct the superintendent to inform parents that Zoom the distance learning tool that is being used by the district is under scrutiny by the Office of New York's Attorney General for its uh, data privacy and security practices. The chief um, concern is that unscrupulous, unscrupulous users are interrupting Zoom meetings and using the platform um, screen sharing features to project unwanted graphic content to meeting participants. The information is important for the protection of our children and also necessary for parents so that they can make an informed decision as to whether to continue using Zoom platform from a legal perspective. It is also the smart thing to do. My third um, recommendation is to direct the superintendent to start investigating ways in which this crisis may provide future long-term benefits to the district. There may be remote work options for some staff, and there may be an increased um, teleconferencing opportunities with attorneys, which will reduce costs related to travel time. There may be remote um, learning options, whether full or part-time, that can benefit everyone, and there may be uh, crisis preparation that can be put in place now for future use to name a few. Thank you. Next community member is Dee Morris. Um, what will happen to oh boy, um, subjects that build on each other and will particularly have gaps in new material between now and fall semester? Example, math. Um, um, IB, one IB, will, uh, will the students start next fall and repeat that or will they start with math? Um, I will, I and have to catch up with the math um, IB material plus the math 
three all in the first semester at a faster pace? And there's a question mark. If our student attends an online course from a private school for one subject online during the, this time, will they be able to apply that grade to their transcripts instead um, of the CDM grade? Um, will new materials be taught during the remainder of the semester via distance learning? Okay. Um, let's see. This is for um, Mrs. Flora. Are we doing 13A? Um, to, you have to unmute yourself for a second. This one was on both of them, 9A and 13A. Um, that was for um, Dr. Dowdy. I yeah. mean, does he let's, want us to do both of them? Uh, let's, let's move it to, um, for sure, let's move it to 13A because it talks about more about the, the, the uh, well, no, because he talks about you will have. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and do it now. Okay, because I also have two others for 13A, um, Eric um, Bosarup and also Cynthia Blackwell. Yeah, and we'll, we'll oh, hold those so till 13A. We'll hold those two for 13A? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead with um, Dr. Dowdy. Um, it says, these comments are from Dr. Britt Dowdy, President of the Teachers Union. Good evening, Newport, um, Newport Mesa Federation Teachers want to thank Newport Mesa Unified School District for working to um, keep staff and students safe. This is the district's first priority. Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers understands the reasons for school dismissal. We also understand the need to transition to new instruction. Earlier today, I sent each of you a lengthy email with many concerns brought from our members. We are deeply concerned the current district plan Will expand the learning gap between our successful and at-risk students. We are also concerned the current district plan will add to the anxiety and stress of employees. Later this board, um, oh, later in this board meeting, you will have a report on COVD-19. Your, your employees voices were not solicited in this report. Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers, teachers expects you will find a method to call on Dr. Dowdy to, keep, to get the perspective of persons that are creating lessons and providing supports to the students. Everything um, to this point has been a one-way decision process. Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers leadership has gotten regular updates from the senior administration but has not been asked for feedback on those plans. As um, Newport Mesa Federation of Teach Leaders ask questions, often the response is, that is a good idea. I, don't con um, I didn't consider. The board needs to understand there is an absence of collaboration from your administration while trying to navigate this crisis. Newport Mesa Federation teachers offered repeatedly to work with senior administrators so we can all have the best plans for students and employees. Currently, the curriculum decisions are being made without um, consulting the experts, the teachers and the support providers that do the work. The district is repeating the same mistakes made with SWAN math, early phases of RCD in English language arts and the lack of district-wide curriculum in high school mathematics. The district needs to hit the pause button and develop a robust instructional plan with the input of our elected union leaders and practitioners. Students cannot afford another ill-conceived instruction plan, um, instructional plan. It is not appropriate to put the entire burden on individuals, teachers that may not have the resources, the skills, or at-home work um, environment to create a new online curriculum. Okay. Next one. All right. So um, 
And well, I still then, have two um, community cards for 13A. Okay, so we'll, move reminder. To, um, we'll move those to the 13, after the 13A uh -huh. presentation. Great, thank you. So we're now moving on to uh, Dr. Navarro's superintendent's report, item number 10. Yes, um, I really wouldn't, just wanted to share with you, uh, I actually walked down memory lane here because back in 2005, 2006, we actually started our first distance learning project. And uh, we uh, worked with Florida Virtual uh, Academy. I think uh, maybe uh, Mrs. Floor and Mrs. Black will remember that. Uh, but uh, we initiated some classes. We, uh, we taught econ, we taught health, uh, we taught government. Uh, we still teach health and government on a distance learning platform. And I think it's important that the lessons that we learned back then, and we took a long time to train teachers. We didn't just give them a week's worth of induction and throw them into the curriculum. We spent a lot of time, and Dr. Mishney was a big part of that. We partnered on, on that project together. Uh, but what we learned is that distance learning is three parts, okay? There's the synchronous learning, there's the asynchronous learning, and there's the independent learning. So it's a three-legged stool, okay? The synchronous learning is when the teacher is engaging all students on a platform. And they're working and they're covering major topics, getting direction on what to do. The, uh, and then the asynchronous piece is when the students are working either independently or with partners following the teacher's instruction on what their projects are, do, are, are, are to do. Sometimes those are, uh, they're creating things, writing, or, or, or they're uh, developing videos, whatever the project may be. Other times it's a panel discussion with a small group of students who discuss an important theme or con two important themes in a, in a piece of work. And then uh, the third one is uh, the, uh, the asynchronous part, which means uh, we will expect students to uh, do work on their own, okay? Not just in groups, not just following up on work, but there'll be independent work done as well. And uh, that's when teachers like to check in with small groups of students. And I remember learning from our early pioneers in the distance learning project that uh, they felt they learned, they knew their kids better in distance learning than in their regular face-to-face -face classes. Uh, and that is because they provided some independent time. There wasn't as much face time as there is in the classroom with all students, but there was more independent time with individual students or smaller groups of students. So, you know, we're off uh, and, uh, and, and, and launching a major uh, change to go from face-to-face -face instruction to distance uh, learning. And uh, it's going to uh, be a, a, a process as our teachers learn how to use the software, learn how they can group kids to work in small groups, learn how they can use different projects for kids to participate in the learning. And it doesn't all have to be tests and essays, it can be videos, it can be projects, it could be uh, a, many different uh, wonderful opportunities for students. And that was our learning from, from way back then. And uh, I think that's still what you would hear from those teachers who started back then and are still working in those classes. So it's just a little prelude into what distance learning is. There's three parts to it. We have to do all three parts well. We have to have balance and, uh, we, have, and we have to get there. But in order to get there, what, one of the important things is teachers know how to have to learn how to maximize those tools. So I uh, will pass it on back to the board president. Uh, great, so now we are, um... We have the privilege of, we have our student board members and we ask them some very specific questions because clearly they are not able to report on activities at their schools. And so I'm going to call them. I hope they're all on. They may have had some difficulty. So I'm just gonna go in um, order. Is Carolyn Brewster available? Yes. Hi, right, I'm Carolyn. Welcome, I'm you're from Corona Del Mar. Yes, hi. Um, so the first, first of all, thank you so much. Um, for all your effort. I know that it's a lot for not only our families, but your families as well. And sometimes people forget that. So um, the first question was, how are students in general doing during this crisis? Well, seniors and spring sport athletes are taking this the hardest, I think, um, just because of all the special events they've worked towards. I'm a spring sport athlete and a senior, so I'm definitely feeling 
a little bit saddened by everything that's happening. Um, and then overall students feel the most secure when there's a set schedule for like classes, which actually for me, I've had a great experience on distance learning. So I've had scheduled Zooms, um, chat rooms within those Zooms. It's been great. And a lot of the students have been feeling like they have a secure set schedule or that will be happening after spring break. Um, as for questions, um, one of my questions was, well, I'm not sure if you're going to get to this, but how are schools going to accommodate students next year in the loss of expected learned material? And the district in contact with CIF Southern Section at all, like for a modified CIF. And um, actually that answers my question. So those are my questions. And then um, what the board needs to know from a student perspective is I think, again, the more structure, the better for daily learning, which will occur after spring break. And um, all of us want to go back to school so badly. So even if there's only one week left, we're willing to go back. So that's just from seniors and, and freshmen and everywhere in between. So thank you so much for all that you've been doing. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Caroline. Okay, is Catherine Pham from Costa Mesa on? I'm here. Correct, good. Okay, Catherine, you're up. Okay, so my report's a little bit longer than usual, so um, here we go. Good evening, everybody. I find the school dismissal very sudden, but very necessary. All of us are in the midst of adjusting to this change and to distance learning. Personally, I have so much more free time uh, due to the shorter classes on Zoom and no extracurricular activities. There's more time to do homework, more time to spend with family, and more time to do things I normally wouldn't do because of school. And personally, I've stayed inside for most of quarantine, probably like everyone else, to bring about a quicker return to normalcy. So um, to gain student input on distance learning and the COVID-19 crisis, I created a survey based on the questions that you guys gave us. And I use the Google Forms platform, which I shared on my social media. Um, in these challenging times, I believe it is more important than ever for students, teachers, and administration to stay connected and to communicate. So um, 58 students took my six question survey and I will, brief, I will be briefly reviewing the responses with, with you all. <clears throat> so the first two questions were, what do you think of this crisis slash school dismissal and how are you personally managing with the crisis? So most of the students find it very sudden and very unfortunate, but we do understand that dismissal was key to not only our health, but to the health of the community as a whole. School dismissal was the right choice to make. We are making efforts to manage our free time, pick up old hobbies, and spend time with our families, which is pretty inevitable since we're all stuck inside with them. Um, next question. How has distance learning affected you? Zoom and other online learning platforms are not the same as a face-to-face -face lecture, but it does provide adequate communication between students and teachers. A positive is that it is much easier to work at my own pace. We can work on classwork outside of the 55 minute window due to Google Classroom and School Loop. There's less rush. However, a problem with Zoom is that it is more difficult to retain information and it is easier to get distracted, which makes learning harder. I understand that this abrupt change has made the development of distance learning similar to like building a plane while it's in flight. To help with this development, I suggest a new le lesson structure to help those struggling to learn over Zoom. Teachers could post their lessons a day or two before each Zoom meeting. My math teacher records a video to go over the lecture. Um, students could fill out their notes and try to do their lesson homework. In the class Zoom meeting, um, teachers could review the lesson, answer questions, and discuss the homework, which would be due by the next Zoom class. So far, this lesson structure has proved very efficient and very beneficial for my math class. We could learn at our own pace, and there would be more time to answer questions and review over the 55 minute Zoom period. Okay. <clears throat> on the next section of my survey, I asked students to rate their distance learning experience on a scale from one to five, one being bad and five being good. Unfortunately, almost 64% of the students rated their experience three and below. 
according to their responses to my previous question, this is not because they hate the whole idea of distance learning. There are several factors that are unrelated to distance learning and more related to the coronavirus crisis. The main factor is the quarantine's effect on mental health. Students reported feeling depressed and unmotivated because they are separated from their peers and their teachers. Learning over a screen, one said, just isn't the same as learning in the classroom. It takes a lot of self-discipline to motivate ourselves and manage our time. Personally, I hope that more mental and emotional support will be incorporated in, in phase two of distance learning. Okay, we're almost done. This is the second to last question. Um, what do you want to know more about this crisis? And I'm sure all of you have gotten these questions at least a thousand times. Um, SAT and ACT testing dates are up in the air and I'm pretty sure you all are unsure about them as well. The majority of the responses are asking when school will resume, what will happen to graduation, and what the new curriculum will be. All questions that I understand have uncertain answers that are dependent on the containment of the coronavirus. Final question. Is there anything you'd like the board to know from a student perspective? Teachers are still getting used to developing and delivering lessons online. There is an inconsistency with strategy and communication from Zoom, Screencastify, Google Classroom, Flipgrid, and Schoolook, this disorganization is a little frustrating for students. In a virtual conversation with Dr. Haley, he mentioned that each administrator is working closely with the teachers to help straighten the learning curve and also provide equal opportunity for students of all ages and disciplines. Personally, I suggest that students also be required to post a lesson outline like perhaps an agenda complete with links to necessary outside sources, Zoom meetings, and homework. If our lessons were coordinated like this, it would be much easier on both students and teachers to organize our work and manage our time. Based on what I, a student, have personally learned from student opinions on distance learning, I believe that student input is vital to making this program succeed. What I have created is a mere small scale survey, 58 students. But if the district as a whole could create a survey like mine and share it, there would be so much more student input. You all would learn the effectiveness of online education from the ones experiencing it. The feedback from the NMUSD student body is extremely beneficial to the creation, revision, and reform of the distance learning program. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Catherine. Wow. Thank you. That's such good information. Wonderful presentation. If you could make sure that you forward that to uh, Dr. Bra uh, to Dr. Drake, um, I'm sure that he would. And Dr. Russell Lee Sung, I think that that would be um, wonderful, so he can take your comments in consideration. And I think it's a great idea, Dr. Navarro, about having a, a student survey with through, through Thought Exchange. Great idea. Thank you. I liked it. Thanks, Catherine. You're great welcome. job. Um, uh, we got Luke Graham from Early College. She's on yet? Don't think so. Okay. Um, also, um, we are getting requests. Keep trying if you can't get on. I know there's not, I don't believe we have a limit. So just keep trying. I know this is all new to us. And so we'll start doing, we have currently, we have 140 people on there. Oh, Luke, Luke you're there. Great. Hi. Hi, Luke. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> um. I can't believe I have to go after Catherine's. So that was incredible. Um, <laughs> good, good evening, uh, board and trustees. Mine is a little bit more um, from personal opinion, um, but uh, also I asked around, of course. So to address how students in general are doing during this crisis and school dismissal, um, it seems like there's sort of two sides to it. I personally am doing really well. Um, <laughs> I have to get up very early for school, or not very early, actually not that early at all, but early for me. And I have a lot of things I enjoy doing outside of school, a lot of hobbies sort of things. So it's nice to be able to stay at home. Um, also, I have a lot of nephews and nieces that I uh, help a lot. Um, but I know that there are um, a few people at my school who um, have like difficult homes um, both in like capabilities and also just families. Uh, so it's a mixed bag on reaction, um, which is getting better because we start school tomorrow. 
actually. Our, our classes start tomorrow. Um, looking forward to that. I personally managed um, my time during this. My, my routine hasn't really changed other than I don't see as many people. I mean, I work with a lot of people through email. I've sent a lot more emails the last two weeks than I ever have. Um, and I've just been staying busy. I have things I enjoy doing and I, I keep doing them. It's good, to, it's good to implement routine for yourself. This is a great time to practice self-discipline. Um, and then any question I wanna know more about the crisis, um, I'd love to know if we have any idea how um, colleges are gonna perceive these grades because things are changing and um, certain classes are, are even changing their grading structure depending on how the class itself is changing onto this online format with distance learning. So I'm a little concerned with how colleges will take these grades, um, but I guess we'll have to see. Uh, and then is there anything I want you to know from a student perspective? Um, I think it was necessary to do this whole thing, this uh, distance learning. I mean, it's a pandemic and the US has the most cases right now, which is crazy. Um, but other than that, it, it's been a little confusing and a little difficult to get going, but we're finally sort of warming up. And I wish my first day of school had been Monday so I could give a bit, little bit of a better report, but tomorrow I'm gonna get a, a full taste of how that sort of is going to be playing out. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Luke. Thank you very much. And welcome back to school. New way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. Okay, uh, we have Kenya Ro Rocha. Is she on? Hi. Wait, I'm trying to. Hi, there you are. Yeah, I'm trying to start the video. Ah, there she is. There you are. Hi. Okay, so from how students at my school are doing during this crisis as well, like a lot of them are doing a exercise, you know, watching Netflix and Disney Plus. And I know all of us upperclassmen really want to go back to school since it's our senior year and it's like we want to experience the whole year. But like a lot of lower classmen, you know, they're taking this as a vacation. You know, my younger brother, he's a freshman. He's on his PS4 right now. <laughs> and yeah, um, how I'm personally managing this crisis is well, I'm sleeping in a lot. Um, I do have a lot of free time now since not a lot of my teachers are giving me assignments right now. They're waiting for after spring break. But like my math teacher, like he has, gives us the work a day before. So then I know what I'm going to be doing, which is good. I like that. And I personally don't hate this online school thing because I've done online health and American democracy and econ. So like I know how this whole system works. So it's like this schooling stuff like by myself it like I don't know it's better for me in a way and a question I have is like will seniors have a graduation ceremony because I know our prom is probably going to get canceled like all these events that we would normally have uh, we just want a ceremony and like if we do go back on May 29th like are there going to be any like restrictions like for kids and stuff like that and yeah that's it Thank you. Thank you, Kenya. I'm sorry that you're having a difficult time. Okay, Bailey Bogard from Newport Harbor. I yes, hi. Hi, how are you, sweetie? Alrighty, so it's interesting how identical our report is to CDMs. Uh, every single thing that she was saying pretty much applies to Newport Harbor as well in terms of scheduling and routine. I heard that throughout all of the reports. That's something that we also would highly appreciate is a schedule and a routine. Um, but when listening to the public comments, uh, I did hear about how classes aren't exactly starting up with homework. I already have a lot of assignments going. A lot of my classes, we have scheduled Zoom meetings. Um, and through talking with a lot of students and teachers, I found that Google Classroom is the favorite um, platform for learning for the students and the teachers it's easily accessible it works really well so if that was a if that was a board decision good job with you guys doing that that is going to work really well i don't know who made that decision on google classroom but all my teachers love it um, in terms of what asb is trying to do we have done social media stuff like posting on instagram we've had teachers actually take over and post about their day throughout quarantine different teachers talking about that which is interesting to see their life 
in a day like this um, and positive challenges and stuff like that. And the only downside I would say is the Zoom crashes, the people who come in with through the security and privacy. We, I've had that happen about five times already uh, throughout my Zooms. So that's the one thing that I would love to see improvements on is the privacy. Um, but that's pretty much it. So thank you. Great, thank you, uh, Bailey. Did we have anybody from Back Bay? I know we were trying to get somebody. I'm not sure whether we were able to arrange that or not. No, we do not. Okay, great, thank you. All right, moving on to item 12, uh, Harbor Council PTA, Julie. Hi. Good evening, uh, President Floor, board members, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and guests. Uh, my name is Julie Link, Harbor Council PTA president, and I want to report that our membership as of today was 6,687. Um, I'm since I was uh, I was AWOL in Italy when all this happened, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was quarantining myself for two weeks so I didn't pass the virus on to anybody here and now so I'm two weeks ahead of everybody else I've been stuck in this house for a long time <laughs> <laughs> anyways I want to um to uh do a positive note on I want to announce again um the uh, reflections of 2020 fourth district uh award winners um the high school music uh, Sophia Raven, third place winner from Corona Del Mar High School. Um, high School Photography, Zara Aguilera, second place from Early College High School. High School Dance, Grace O'Brien, third place, Newport Harbor High School. Primary Film, Scotty Hudson, first place from Lincoln Elementary. Special Artist, Zarar Zubar, first place, Adams Elementary. Middle, middle School Visual Arts, Vanessa Van Liet, second place, Ensign. High School Visual Arts, Arlie Sojo, first place from Costa Mesa High School. Um, you know, with the cancellation of the um, 121st California State PTA Convention, um, you know, it's, a, it's unfortunate that our first place winners um, were not going to be showcased there, but I was hoping that maybe we could, um, I spoke to my board, maybe that we could have some type of uh, recognition and special something for, for the three people that are going up to state. State has not released the winners as of yet, but I will get that to you as soon as that comes out. Uh, more cancellations. I want to report that um, refunds from the 4th District Admin Dinner um, have gone out. Uh, cancellation of our April 13th Harbor Council meeting um, has been canceled. I am going to see if I could maybe uh, do a Zoom password protected uh, meeting. Um, and cancellation of our May 4th Harbor Council Honorary Service Award luncheon. Um, I'm just so disappointed and it's heartbreaking because we have so many people among us that deserve recognition. Anyways, on to uh, PTA elections along with association meeting. Um, California uh, State PTA has presented councils and units with guidelines and procedures on how to have their association meetings. We now have permission to utilize the teleconferencing such as Zoom or other platforms. This is critical as so many of our PTAs have not had their elections. We still do have to follow all of our bylaws. However, now we have the opportunity to be a little creative in our communication, which allows us to do our business. Harbor Council PTA had our first Zoom executive board meeting uh, last Monday morning. It was successful with no technical is issues at all. It was my first time hosting one. I was so nervous, but it all went out up great. So our goal moving forward is to help our school's PTA become educated with these technical tools, which will enable them to pass this information on to parents and ultimately help with their students' education. Uh, end of report. Thank you. 
Thanks, Julie. Um, I wanted to let um, both Julie and um, our student board members, you are welcome to continue to participate um, or you can, uh, you can be excused. I know um, we value your input, so just let us know. Um, and so we're moving on now to uh, Dr. Navarro. We have a significant report going on. Yes, I'd like to thank the board for allowing us the opportunity to update the public and the board on all of the workings behind the scenes and as, uh, as well as uh, what's gone on in the past and what we're gonna be doing in the future. So I uh, would like to hand it off to uh, Mr. Lee Sung. All right, good evening. Uh, I'd like to kind of set the stage uh, for a very comprehensive report uh, describing our response to uh, COVID-19 and uh, maintaining essential services such as meals, supporting students, uh, the instructional program, and uh, all the things that we're doing to keep the district operational. Uh, I wanna say that the team is absolutely working around the clock, extensive hours. We've been building systems uh, to meet this challenge. And I think it's also important to, important to acknowledge that we're doing so while making sure our employees are safe. And obviously, uh, if we have them all here working full shifts, uh, present and, and doing things, we could move a lot faster, but we've had to be very mindful of making sure that we're calling only in the essential employees and doing so, so with all the precautions that we must follow. Uh, I also wanna say that we absolutely appreciate uh, the work that everybody is doing uh, in preparing our distance learning program. Uh, we appreciate the board's support in extending the date now through uh, May 29th and possibly longer, uh, which allows us to plan and prepare uh, for this extended period. And that will allow us to increase our level of instruction and to maintain the essential operations of the district. And I believe you heard uh, some great insight from our student uh, board reps tonight uh, that this is in the infancy stages, but there was tremendous amount of work that went into uh, setting uh, uh, the, the, the systems and getting Chromebooks out. There were a number of employees, which you'll hear in the, uh, further in the report, uh, that were working tireless, tirelessly behind the scenes to make all of these things happen. Uh, I wanna uh, state that you're gonna hear some incredible examples of the work that has been done. You'll hear some information about what will be done in the future to meet these challenges. And I'm so personally proud of the professionals that are here in this district who have worked, uh, and you're gonna hear many examples of that. Uh, our teachers, our TOSAs, our coordinators, our directors, so many people building this remote learning program, almost literally overnight, to, uh, to keep learning happening for our students. And it's just gonna get better and better each day as it already has. So though I wish that we can always do more and do it faster, uh, we've made incredible progress. And so what I wanna do is to introduce uh, several individuals today uh, that will describe the work that's been done and will continue to be done. So there's various aspects of uh, our response to COVID-19. And I'd like to start with having uh, Mary Groska, our Director of Health Services, uh, give us an update on uh, the health services. Mary? Right before you start, um, how do you wanna handle uh, questions uh, that may come up from the board members? Uh, you know, I always like uh, questions uh, that are timely to the speaker, so we don't have to go back and forth uh, uh, to each speaker, but just keep in mind that we, uh, gosh, probably have about 10 individuals that uh, have a piece to share of this okay. uh, giant challenge. Okay, great. So, Mary, Gretzka. So, what's the process you want us to use? Yeah, go hand ahead hand and hand ask hand questions. Hand. Go ahead and ask questions to that speaker. Okay. Yeah, raise your hands. Raise your hands. So I can follow along. I'll write them down. Okay, thank you, Martha. 
Good evening, uh, members of the board. Um, briefly, I'll cover um, a little bit about coronavirus and school nurse activities. Um, as you know, the virus is global and information about the virus um, is frequently changing as, medical, as the medical science community learns more. It is essential to shift through fact and fiction. I'm staying informed by reading daily updates from a variety of reliable sources, including the Orange County Healthcare Agency, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the California Department of Public Health, and the Orange County Department of Education. I share those updates regularly with Dr. Jocko. As of March 27th, and still reported today on the Orange County Healthcare Agency website, there are 321 cases of COVID-19 and three deaths in Orange County. Costa Mesa has eight cases and Newport Beach has 32. The coronavirus is now community acquired. The Orange County Healthcare Agency is the public health authority responsible to do case investigation and contact notification. Because the coronavirus is spreading through the community, the school district will no longer be notified as was the process during the early phase of the coronavirus outbreak in Orange County. Notification will occur to particular individuals according to the healthcare agency's protocols. The school district is not a messenger of the public health authority. We're under no obligation uh, and in terms of COVID-19 investigation and notification. At this point, the Orange County Healthcare Agency will only be conducting investigations of cases identified in hospital patients, healthcare workers, and residents of congregate living facilities. Healthcare providers have been asked to inform their patients of test results and give them education on disease prevention and monitoring for worsening disease. Individuals who have tested positive or are presumed positive have also been asked to notify their contacts. When people share information, often there's misunderstanding and rumors get started. I have asked our administrators to notify me with any concerns of suspected cases of COVID-19 so that I may connect with the affected individuals to learn more about their health status. I contact each person to offer support and guidance and I'm checking with the Orange County Healthcare Agency when necessary. Confidentiality is a priority and it is maintained and will continue to be maintained. No information regarding COVID-19 status of students, family members, or staff will be shared with the public. Our district has been mindful about messaging to reduce the risk of transmission, especially while distributing Chromebooks and allowing limited staff on sites for essential duties. I heard some of the comments that the students made and the coronavirus really has um, resulted in social disruption and mental health concerns. And there's a lot of resources out in the community. I do wanna assure you that health services will work very closely with Dr. D'Agostino in addressing resources um, for students and, and for our community. As most of us are doing, I'm meeting with my team and other district colleagues either by mail uh, email, phone, or Zoom. And then in regard to nursing activities, nurses are participating in student IEPs, connecting with families of students who are medically fragile, and those students who are receiving home hospital instruction to see how the children are faring. Nurses are reaching out to families of children with health concerns or those with whom they had been working prior to school closure in terms of securing uh, items such as glasses or updating prescriptions. Nurses are working in small groups to update practice guidelines and protocols. In addition to IEPs, nurses will continue to work remotely on year-end reports, communication to parents and guardians in relation to health requirements for the next school year. Are there any comments or, or questions I could respond to? I don't see any questions. I don't see any hands. Um, thank, thank you, you for, I'll, I'll say, thank you, Mary, for um, the flyers and all the information that went out about student mental health and resources. A lot of people really appreciated and felt cared for through that process. So thank you for putting student and staff mental health at the top of your priority list. Great. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Okay, okay so uh, 
Ms. Anderson, you're going to hear more on that from Phil later on uh, in this report, uh, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, now moving on, just a quick update on meals for students. And uh, on behalf of Dale Ellis, our Director of Nutrition Services, who is leading a fabulous group of employees, and they have been serving meals every day since the beginning of our uh, school dismissal. And uh, just some numbers, uh, they're doing grab and go meals uh, at 16 sites currently, and they are serving regularly now over 2,000 meals a day. And they are now keeping a total count, and they are now approaching almost 22,000 meals since our school dismissal. Uh, I'm also happy to say that we are preparing to continue to serve meals during spring break. Uh, we're not required to do so, but again, our belief and, and uh, Dale and our nutrition services team feels that we need to maintain that continuity to provide meals through spring break. And so we're very appreciative of that uh, service that they're providing to our students and community. Any questions on meals before we move to the next part? Um, um, thank you, I didn't get to raise my hand, but I just unmuted. Go ahead. Please thank Dale and the nutrition service workers that have been able to come in and work. One of the consistent comments I have heard from parents is, thank you for the meals, it is so appreciated. So yeah. thumbs up. I noticed that some school districts have cut back theirs or actually are, are handing out uh, three meals at a time. So they're, they're doing it on Mondays and Saddleback is doing it on Mondays and Thursdays and handing out uh, full three on meals. And then on Thursday, they do it for the weekend. So they're doing, they're just only doing it two days a week, but everything is, is huge. As my kid said, a horde of it. <laughs> so, thank you. All okay. Right, moving on. Russell, do we have, um, are, are we going to possibly be having breakfast sometime soon? Was the timeline for that in a month or so? Or <laughs> So uh, one step at a time, uh, but uh, I have been talking to Dale Ellis about uh, possibly making that happen. We're not quite there yet. Maybe knowing that we are now in it for an, an even longer extended period, uh, we're going to be working towards that, but I can't guarantee that and any specific date, uh, but we are uh, considering that option. Okay. Is there any way too, if we have schools that perhaps have extra meals on Fridays, if they can give out multiples? Because we have some, we have extra food sometimes, and we have some students that they may not eat on the weekend during the school year, which I guess is probably still the case, you know, during this. So if it's possible, is it can we give out multiple meals if a school has extra on Fridays? I will look into that. I will ask, I'm not the expert in this area. Uh, there, there might be some reimbursement or legality issues because all of these meals are counted and, uh, and provided reimbursements to the district. But I will definitely uh, inquire on that. Thank you. Okay, can we move on to distance learning? Absolutely, Russell, go for it. Okay, so this next part of the report uh, is going to feature uh, John Drake, who's doing a fabulous job leading, leading our instructional program in this environment. And he's gonna call upon several members of the team uh, to report out on uh, what we've done to prepare to get to this stage. And we'll also hear from some principals and then moving on to the future of distance learning. So I will turn it over to John Drake. Okay, thank you, Russell, uh, um, and board members. Um, it, uh, it really has been, uh, you know, a, a huge task for us to get distance learning up, up and running um, since the 13th of March. Um, and uh, I think it's important for us um, to, to recognize you know, kind of the steps we've taken uh, to get us to this point um, and, and know that our focus really um, kind of coming into this without, you know, with, with constantly evolving and changing information in relation to the length of, of time that we're going to be out. We started this out um, uh, in, a, in a place where we were building to sustain um, and focusing our efforts on systems, as Russell has mentioned um, uh, initially, um, and we'll continue to focus on that as um, I think as one of our, our student board members said, uh, as we're building this in flight. 
Um, we also have focused a lot of effort and will continue to in building the capacity of our staffs, um, including ourselves, um, to you know, utilize tools um, and, and each other in ways that are gonna continue to support um, learning in this really new environment. And I think that's important to understand. While Dr. Navarro talks about 2005, um, starting distance learning, um, my understanding at that point, that was with some select uh, uh, teachers who were in to move that forward. This is everybody. This is all 1,000 teachers and 20,000 students. Um, and it is a complete paradigm shift for us um, that we are moving through um, together um, with an enormous amount of work on a daily basis um, as a team. Uh, and that's something I really want to want to recognize while, um, you know, we're, we are all putting in the time and effort uh, and thought and um, teamwork to to move this forward. Um, there have been some things that have remained constant uh, uh, up to this point, and, and we anticipate will remain constant uh, as long as we are in this distance learning mode. One of them I've already mentioned is um, is the kind of changing information that we're getting. Um, as well as, um, you know, recognizing along the way some things that we need to address. Um, that's going to be a constant as we go through this. It will continue to be a, a team effort um, across our divisions. Uh, this is not just an ed services um, approach. We are across divisions because as you heard from a lot of our students, um, there's an enormous piece of this that's social, emotional, um, and related to mental health. Um, from outside influences that, that really make teaching and learning um, almost secondary to some of our families and students. Um, but we're keeping it at the forefront and we're doing that as a team. Also, and you'll hear from um, Dr. Mishni in a little bit, um, you know, we started out this having an initial conversation about some values and a lot of our decisions and directions are based in our values um, to, move, to move this effort forward. Um, and, and in general, we really have tried to take a balanced approach to this, um, where initially, um, and really throughout, right, we are in the people business, our focus has been on the people. From students, uh, to our teachers, to each other, um, really taking that approach to make sure that everybody's mind and heart is into this. Um, and really focusing on building those pieces and making those connections with each other. Um, teacher to teacher, student to teacher, student to student, because we know how important those things are as we move through this, and we heard that from our student board members. Um, <clears throat> so our focus really initially out of the gates has been to make connections uh, to kids, as well as, as um, taking inventory of the access our students and families have to sustain this, this potentially for an extended period of time. Um, and as we've uh, progressed through this, um, connecting uh, and uh, um, uh, determining who needs access and getting them access through Chromebook distribution and materials distribution, um, we have started the learning. Um, we have started the connections, and you're going to hear about all of that. And you heard that again, you know, reflecting back the student board members. A lot is happening to interact with kids and get kids to interact with each other. Um, and we've done a lot up to this point to lay a, a strong foundation of infrastructure um, and value to move it forward um, to the next phase, uh, next step of, of learning. Um, and an enormous amount of training and effort has, has gone into all of this um, in order to position us uh, to take this next step um, and, and get back to where we were March 13th when kids were in seats um, and picking up the learning from there and moving it forward once we get back from spring break. Um, I think, you know, to use a cliche, it would have been wonderful to be able to just flip a switch, um, but we're not in that business right now. Um, we really want to be methodical and thoughtful in moving this forward again so it can be sustained. Um, I do want to bring in uh, some colleagues, the team, some of the team, right? Uh, really, there's many people behind each of these people um, supporting these efforts. Uh, but I want to move in the direction of kind of all of the work that we've done up to this point to lay the infrastructure. Uh, and put things in place in order to carry this uh, learning, uh, distance learning forward for the long term. Um, so I'm going to ask initially Dr. Sir uh, and Dr. Bauermeister to come in and talk about um, uh, some of, the, some of the, the work that's been done to provide the infrastructure for and access for the distance learning. 
So good evening. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege to be able to share a little bit of information in regards to some of the outstanding work that has been going on related to Chromebook distribution. Uh, Newport Mesa is very fortunate to have Awesome Babovich, our Information Technology Director, uh, leading our technology implementation across the district, and never has his expertise been more appreciated than uh, the work that has been happening in regards to uh, everything related to technology. Specifically, I'd like to share one example of what he has done in, in the world of Chromebook distribution just recently. So this last Monday, uh, March 23rd, we started Chromebook distribution, but before that, on Saturday, March 21st, um, Awesome was leading a team of 81 Newport Mesa employees, uh, people from many different divisions, maintenance and operations, transportation, uh, grounds workers, clerks, accountants, uh, information technology staff, supervisors, directors, and an assistant superintendent. Uh, collectively, they put in over 640 hours disassembling Chromebook carts, testing Chromebooks, and preparing thousands of Chromebooks for checkout. Um, a lot of the work they did was focused on uh, having to gather all of the Chromebooks, the carts in third grade, uh, dismantling those, getting them all prepared for sites. Um, that was no small feat. That was a uh, a huge effort and we're very appreciative that Awesome was able to lead that effort with getting our sites prepared. Uh, looking at the elementary level, uh, the sites themselves with uh, principals, administrative assistants, um, school community facilitators, uh, custodians, many, many people are, have been involved with Chromebook distribution. And uh, at the elementary level, uh, we started distribution on Monday the 23rd and we have distributed over 2,500 Chromebooks to students in grades three through six. That work is continuing. We are uh, uh, continuing to monitor students that are uh, needing more Chromebooks, uh, and uh, that, that work is not stopping. We've been able to get a mass majority of students' devices so that we're in good shape, but we are continuing to follow up with all students so that all students grades three through six have a device. So yes. I have doctor, a question. Doctor, oh, go ahead. Um, I've had requests that if there are Chromebooks still floating around out there, if we can extend the um, distance learning to teachers of grades K through three, K through two that have the capability, have the majority of their class that have devices at home, and they would like to Zoom teach also. If they are around, is that a possibility? Yeah, so that is something that we have had discussions about. No final decisions have been made. Our focus has been focusing on our students in third grade through 12th grade and making sure that everyone uh, within those grade levels have devices, but that is a point of discussion and no final decisions have been made. Uh, what's the process for that teacher? Talk, keep talking with her principal, correct? Because that's what I told her to do. Yes, that's correct. Uh, uh, and Char, we, um, uh, you know, we do hear the same from principals. Um, there is a bit of a, uh, you know, a philosophical conversation of appropriateness for some of these tools in younger kids' hands. Um, the other part of the conversation, kind of going back to some things that Dr. Navarro was talking about, um, you know, we also have to recognize that there are some um, creative ways that we can access asynchronously. Um, to provide opportunities for kids and families to continue to learn around the big ideas in those grade levels, the big ideas in math, the big ideas um, in, in literacy. Um, and those are conversations that we're having. Um, and, and so uh, again, and then, and then there's also another big IT push in order for that to happen. Oh yeah. That we, and, need, and that we need to consider, but all of those pieces um, are definitely being considered as we you know, move forward uh, in this process. Uh, and another question that I've had is we need to communicate in or continue communicating about connectivity of a lot of West Side students that either don't know that they're supposed to go check, don't know when the connections come in. And, and we've done a lot of communicating. I just don't want us to say we did it 
once and don't do it again. So, so as long as we can keep, we, I know we have a plan to bring connectivity to those who don't have it. So just somewhere, somehow add that to the uh, discussion because students may have a Chromebook and not be able to log on. Yeah, a, a huge part of this team, Shar, is our principals. Um, and we, we each in elementary and secondary today had hour long meetings around um, processes that need to be in place at each site to exhaust efforts at sites to identify those needs um, and then uh, you know, get those to us uh, and, and, and address those, those connectivity needs. So that's something that we anticipate we will continue to do. For Excellent. I wanted to ask a question about that mm -hmm. as well. Can we wait, Ashley? I've got Karen has had her hand up for a while. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Martha. Um, along the lines of Char's first question, I've had some elementary parents of students in second grade contact me because some of the teachers are using Zoom at least to connect. And this is there may be a family where both parents are working at home. They had multiple kids on devices, and a couple families had to go out and buy a device for their second grader to use because they needed to spread them out. So there has to be some consistency. Their teachers are doing that, and we provide something, or they should be going different direction with their curriculum. Terrific. Okay, Ashley? Um, yeah, my comment slash question is where are we in getting district cell phones to our school facilitators because my current understanding is that they are being told to use their personal cell phones and block their numbers which then there's a gigantic game of telephone that happens can we ex expedite that process and get just some very basic cell phones into the hands of our school facilitators so they're able to directly contact parents and make sure students are up and running with connectivity as soon as possible. So I, I wanna to respond to that question, Ashley, uh, a little more globally. Uh, so what we're, what we're trying to share at this point of the report is the uh, work that uh, has been done uh, we acknowledge that there's a lot more work that has to be done to get us to the place where we are shifting to a remote organization. And, and what you described is a very good example of that. And so we have to do this in stages, and, uh, but, but a broader category of what you just described is support for our employees, whether it's teachers, administrators, uh, payroll, accounts payable, on and on and on, moving them to a, a remote uh, environment. So, so we're working on that in stages. Um, and so meanwhile, we have to do what we can. And so if employees voluntarily use their cell phone using a block, then, then so be it for right now. But we may get to cell phones, we may get to laptops, but we have to take it in stages. So what, what, because we have a lot to share and some of the, the Questions may be covered with the response. And when we get towards the end of the distance learning segment, we talk about the future. I think that's where a lot of the questions are, are coming from is what happens next. Great. So if, if, I, if I may, uh, John, if we can move forward with uh, kind of the-, the I, have one, I have one more question, Russell, and that's from uh, Michelle Barto. Okay. Hi. Um, one thing we've talked a lot about technology, which is really great um, for that K through two, and I know it's uh, a work in progress, but something else that is really important with the K through two zone is developmental motor skills um, and not just iPads and screens, which I know personally, my kids are using more of them right now than I would wish, but it's just reality. Um, but what about something related to distance learning for that in regards to, um, workbooks, notebooks, things like um, what they call consumables, those kinds of things that can be distributed as part of that phase, just something that we haven't talked about and um, I'd like to keep on the radar. We can consider that the other piece of that too, um, Ms. Bartow also is providing some families, some, some direction and some activities that they can be doing 
um, alongside their kids or with their kids uh, to also work on some of those fine motor and, and other skills we know that are important for kids at, that early, at those early stages to acquire. Actually, so I'd like to move forward um, uh, with Dr. Bauermeister um, providing uh, some updates in relation to secondary. Good evening. And so just piggybacking on what Dr. Sir said, uh, secondary had basically the same schedule. And one of the things is we had to um, wait for Awesome and his team to make sure that they got all the Chromebooks ready. And um, some of the schools, T. Winkle and uh, Ensign had already had a one-to-one -one rollout. So they only had about 20 Chromebooks each to hand out. But Costa Mesa had not gone through the full Chromebook rollout yet. So they had to pass out 550 Chromebooks. Estancia had not passed out Chromebooks to their seniors yet, so they had to pass out 450 Chromebooks. And so some uh, started on Monday and had the backup day on Tuesday. Some started on Tuesday and had their backup day on Wednesday. Um, but we called in our principals, our assistant principals, librarian, librarian assistants, and security at those schools where we had all of those Chromebooks to hand out. And so it was a little bit of a domino effect. We had to wait until the Chromebooks were imaged and cleaned and ready to go and then be able to pass them out. Then once they were passed out, I'm sure Jenneth will talk to the training that we had to do for our parents and for our teachers to get up and running. So there were a lot of moving parts that had to happen before our kids could access the curriculum and, and be able to meet with their teachers. So that's a little bit of what we did in secondary to um, to get ready for that. We also are still looking at hotspots for some of our kids. It should be ready shortly. Thank you, Kirk. Um, and as, as uh, Dr. Baumeister mentioned, um, you know, the other piece that we needed to make sure we started getting in place was to build the capacity of teachers around some of the technological tools and instructional tools that they were gonna have to afford themselves to um, in order to move this learning forward. Um, as well as families. Um, and so I wanna bring uh, Dr. Janet Mishney in, our Director of Ed Tech, um, to talk to that. Hey everyone, do you mind if I take a quick selfie? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's fun to be here and see all this technology happening. Um, so I have to start with saying, we really are a village. Newport Mesa is such a village of amazing, people across the board. I've never been prouder to work for Newport Mesa for my 23 years or um, felt more connected to everybody in the district <laughs> and the community. So thank you to all of you. Um, we've been really thinking about this for a good month. Back in early March, we knew what was happening in China and then, you know, Italy, and it was starting you know, we already were hearing and seeing what was happening. So we, we did start to kind of get together and think, you know, we need a distance learning contingency plan. And so we thought, well, we could have an earthquake and we still would need that plan. So let's just work on it, right? So we started really thinking about it and, and a, you know, a big group of minds came together and thought, well, thinking about distance learning, let's think about value and what we value. So number one thing where we value children being able to connect to their teachers in real time. That was our number one thing because that was what we felt like was gonna be missing the most socially, emotionally was that teacher student connection. And so we wanted that to be number one. And then we also wanted it to be a good experience for administrators, teachers, families to feel successful in the connecting. And that doesn't, it happens for some, but for some, it isn't that simple. Um, and so we wanted good learning experiences and all of these things, you know, were on the forefront of our thought process and, and planning. And we wanted equity for all, all of them. So everything you've all talked about, ditto, I agree. Um, so we, we, I talked to people in Hong Kong and, you know, Washington and, I didn't get anyone from Italy, but um, I was able to um, see what people were doing ahead of us and, you know, lessons learned. And then we all thought, okay, basic tools, what do we use the most? What do we know teachers know and what will work? And we came up with Google Classroom, School Loop, um, Screencasting, Seesaw for our littles, and then Zoom, right? And uh, and so we, we started planning and then we 
I really respected the decision. So if you remember, and I know I'm, I have just this amount to talk, I could talk to you all night. Um, every day we came back Monday after we knew students weren't coming back and we came back and thought, okay, we can still meet. We're going to pull teachers back on Tuesday. I'm going to, we're going to get to train them for two days. Everyone gets their, you know, instructional materials and Chromebooks. And then boom, nope, 50 people went to 10. And so then it was like, okay, well, we can do it like this. Some can, and you know, every time we thought we had a plan, we had to make a new plan. And so I really respected the decision to not even bring teachers on board until later that week, because we had to make sure that we had everything in place to give them the best success. And we also needed to give our parents something to do while we got our teachers up to speed. And that was where we launched the distance learning toolkit that helped teachers and parents, um, you know, moving forward kind of timeline. That Thursday and Friday, the teachers came back. My team, my incredible team, trained over 1,000 teachers in two days on Zoom. I mean, literally, 1,000 teachers. So that was huge. And on Screencastify. Um, then we did a student and parent checklist that we sent out to families so they could start getting up to speed if they weren't already logged into those, told them about their opportunities for orientations. That following um, Saturday, we sent out the teacher checklist, which allowed teachers to then kind of say, okay, what else, how else can I get going on my own? Because a lot of people can learn just by, you know, watching a screencast or doing a, a quick guide. So we sent that out. And then Monday, March uh, 23rd and 24th, we did Zoom orientation for students and parents. And if I could have recorded, I would, but there's no recording here. No, don't share on social media. That's our, that's our message. And um, we had over 4,000 households connect to a Zoom session successfully. And that's really all we said to them was, yay, you know, you made it, you got here. We set some norms and expectations for the virtual classroom and, we went, you know, they went on. Um, then we started the same day that uh, we had our second first day of school, I like to call it, because it was like starting over. We began virtual um, training for teachers. So every day since March 25th, we've had five different sessions that teachers could go to around the tools that we have kind of outlined to use right now. Um, and so, and we got, our wonderful digital fellows and coaches and even our alumni digital fellows and coaches to come back and teach these classes for us because we couldn't do it on our own. And so they've been working with their students, but also working with everyone, you know, across the board. And I'm so grateful for that team of um, teachers too. And we've been offering office hours and we have our online professional development in our expedition. So we've been pushing that. Um, and then the last thing we did was just this week, we released the EdTech teacher FAQ. So it's got everything for questions and we just keep updating it. We also created a student parent FAQ and we got that translated. Thank you, Javier. And, um, and now we're looking to move forward. We're continuing to support teachers daily. We've gotten 2,000 emails through EdTech in the last two weeks. I know I have nothing on awesome, but it was pretty impressive. Um, luckily, I was able to bring my admin assistant back. And um, moving forward, we're just going to go deeper. Um, for Zoom, we, we realized out of the gate, we, we didn't lock down enough and make it secure enough. And so we've really put things into place. Um, we are asking teachers to completely authenticate, which means their students have to log in with their NMUSD Google accounts. We made the waiting room feature not an option. You, every single person goes straight into a waiting room without a choice. And so the teacher then has to admit the students. It's one more layer, but it's a safety feature. And I really feel strongly that you know we keep that. We don't wanna lock down to authentication because um, we really encourage, we want our parents to be able to talk to our teachers, we want to be able to talk to colleagues outside of Newport Mesa. And, and honestly, right now, we want our colleague, our staff and, and teachers to be able to talk to family if they need it through this platform. So um, that would be the next step if we don't, if this doesn't work. But um, I think it's already helping and working. The waiting room 
that, you know, nobody gets in if you don't know who they are. So um, that is, I think it, and I'm out of time anyway. Oh, I can't hear, you muted. You're muted, Martha. Sorry, um, did you have a question, Ashley? Your hand's raised. No, I'm okay. wiping my eye. Okay, let me go down here, scroll down here. Any, I don't see any other questions. Any other questions for anybody? Uh, Dana, you're pretty quiet. Oh, Michelle, yeah. Sorry, going back between the raised hand and then you are on opposite sides of my screen. Um, what about, we t I brought it up a while back. What about the, um, that parent hotline? If you're answering 2,000 emails a day, and I know I'm doing tech support on, on my end for a lot of the parents, and um, you know, I'm probably doing 100 emails of tech support a day, uh, the first all of last week. Um, can we get a, some kind of phone hotline? I know we wanted something that was more personal, but um, we really need to have people be able to say like what problems they're having so we can direct them. Um, yes, uh, Ms. Bardo, I'll, I'll respond to that. That is a priority for us to set up a hotline. Uh, and the uh, vision is to set up a, um, a single hotline where parents and students can get multiple levels of support uh, by calling a single number and uh, having also translation services uh, with that. So that is a work in progress and one of our priorities for the next uh, week or so. Thank you. We'll get that going. Terrific. Uh, Vicki, I can't see you. So um, do you have any questions? No, I just wanted to tell Jenneth that was a great presentation. And, um, and it, it was wonderfully clear on what you're doing to prevent some of the initial issues that are always going to happen when you have to do something in a couple days. So um, the hotline would be a great addition and a uh, good report, Jenna. Uh, Dana, any, any comments, questions? I'm good. Thank you, I'm good. Great, Karen? Thanks, thanks for all that good work with Zoom, that's tough. Okay, moving on, uh, Russell. Uh, Char, did you have anything? Sorry, missed you, okay. Okay, uh, John Drake still has the floor, so keep going, John. All right. So, um, you, you know, as, as we all know, this, this first initial um, push has been to make sure that we're, number one, assessing the um, access that kids have while also reconnecting, um, connecting teacher to student, student to student um, around some learning opportunities uh, specific to some of the bigger ideas of, of uh, grade level and content standards. Um, not necessarily, right, meaning that um, we were starting from March 13th and moving forward, but um, uh, reiterating some of the bigger ideas uh, at each grade level in preparation um, while infrastructure is putting in, uh, being put in place uh, to then move the learning forward uh, from where we left off on March uh, 13th. Um, a big part of that team is Gabe Del Real and Kathleen Leary, who I'd like to have uh, share with you from a K-6 perspective um, the support that we're providing around content and instruction. Thank you, John. Good evening. Uh, I, it is a pleasure, pleasure and privilege to be able to share with you uh, some of the work that I've been able to participate in um, with members of an extraordinary team who have, uh, as Russell said, worked around the clock um, since this all started uh, through weekends uh, trying to prepare as much as possible to support our teachers and our students uh, and our families. Um, really, this all started with the recognition that um, both for students and um, our staff, the world just turned upside down in an instant. In a matter of a couple of days, uh, everything teachers knew about their job, everything they trained for, um, completely changed. And we thought about uh, the the trauma that that could create um, for teachers and also for students. Um, teachers represent a huge stable force in their lives. Uh, they create predictability, safety, reassurance, um, positive feedback, uh, guidance and challenge. And uh, all of a sudden those things were uh, unavailable in the ways that were uh, familiar to students in the past. So we really uh, took a moment to pause and think about how are we going to approach this in a way that can be as supportive as possible. 
we wanted to take a very thoughtful and measured approach. Um, and so we knew that distance learning was going to be a major challenge and we uh, wanted to fully commit ourselves to supporting people in this effort. Uh, as uh, was mentioned a few times, and I really appreciate uh, our student board member, Catherine Pham and her comments talking about how much students miss the connection because we recognize that that was going to be a major issue. Um, and so we wanted that to be one of our first uh, primary goals was to create an opportunity for teachers to connect. So what we did is we, in, in elementary, we created um, phases of rolling in our distance learning. The first phase was just uh, the amazing effort that the ed tech team put together in creating a toolkit that families could access online. And um, this gave us an opportunity to uh, collect ourselves and be very thoughtful about how we were going to proceed. Uh, and so then in looking at the tools that were available to us, we wanted to begin with success. Once teachers started uh, reaching out to students and connecting, um, we wanted to make sure that it was a successful experience for both students and families. We wanted people to come back to the opportunities that were being made available to them because uh, they felt that it added value at, while school was, while the traditional school experience was missing from their lives. So we created uh, uh, a template that was available at all grade levels. There were nine templates that were created in preschool through sixth grade. When you consider preschool, uh, trans transitional kindergarten, kindergarten, and then the first through sixth grades, uh, each grade level having their own template of uh, activities related to English language arts, math, science, music, and PE. We had an incredible team of teachers, uh, TOSAs and teacher input uh, in the creation of those templates so that students could deepen their understanding. And that was our, really our goal for the second phase that takes us up until, uh, through April 3rd at the start of spring break to deepen students' understanding with the content that they've already learned. So often in education, we lament uh, the uh, the the pace that we're uh, that we have to uh, teach at in order to cover all of the content for every grade level. Uh, this provides us a unusual opportunity to actually go back and go deeper with students. And so we took full advantage of that opportunity um, in the activities that were created. And teachers expressed a tremendous amount of gratitude when we rolled out the templates. Uh, Kathleen is going to share in a few minutes about, or in a minute, uh, uh, about the uh, ways that we presented the templates in grade level meetings to teachers. Um, but teachers did express a great deal of gratitude because this is all unfamiliar territory to them. And we created a structure in these templates that were available online and continue to be available online so that parents and teachers could become familiar with a format. Uh, now that the distance learning has been extended through May 29th, that format will continue to be used at the elementary level as we populate with new activities uh, beginning after spring break uh, with new learning for students. And new learning will be part of what we do after spring break. The template and the format that families access those activities will be familiar and uh, we think that that will continue to bring them back to the table and help people feel successful with the process. Um, so at this point, I wanna turn it over to Kathleen Leary, who's been an unbelievable partner in this process um, and uh, the support that she's provided to our teachers and our TOSA teams uh, as we worked on this together. Uh, thank you, Gabe. Gabe and I have been working hand in hand in this endeavor and it's, um, as Jenna said, it is taking a village and it's been a great experience to work with all of my colleagues. Um, also, as Gabe mentioned that um, the pre-K six activities um, were developed to deepen the learning, but we also wanted um, to, for our teachers to connect with students and families. We know that students thrive on positive relationships uh, they have with their teachers and we wanted to leverage the tech tools we have to help students connect with the students. Many of them, um, Jenneth had mentioned and that our teachers were trained in, 
and teachers have been using Zoom, Screencast, Seesaw, Google Classrooms, just to name a few, to really connect with our students. Now, as we're making those connections, we're also determining what access students have, and then we're gonna use this to prepare for our next phase. Um, we also know that there's a new way of doing business and it can be very challenging. I know for me as well, it's, it has been a good learning experience, but we wanted to support our teachers. Um, on March 23rd, um, with the rollout of the template and the packet and everything, the online learning resources for th three through um, sixth grade, Gabe and I held grade level meetings to explain distance learning to the, our teachers, as well as answer any questions that they may have. Uh, ahead of time, we had sent the agenda along with a Google form that teachers can input any of their questions so that Gabe and I were prepared to answer their questions going into that meeting. They also had met, um, questions along the way that we either answered directly or had to get back to them because um, we hadn't considered it. Um, in addition, uh, I know that EdTech has been holding office hours. Uh, Ed Services has also been holding office hours for grade level um, teachers and uh, really to support teachers as well as to answer their questions and to get their input on how things are going. So that's just a little bit of an update on the pre-K through sixth grade um, support that we have been giving to teachers. Questions? Would it be yeah. possible to, I know the parents have been getting those templates. I would love to see as a teacher what those look like. Can you send, someone send me them please? I just, particularly for the early elementary, I would love to see what some of the templates are for pre-K to second. So oh, actually, I'll be glad to uh, send those off to Dr. Navarro and he can pass them out to the to Thank the you. Great. Shar? Thank you. My little put the hand up electronically piece disappeared. So <laughs> I'll go, I'll go old tech. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that what I've heard from the teachers I've talked to was that you guys have done a lot of professional development and everyone who kind of gets it appreciates it. Um, we're going to need it, and we know this. We, they, we know they'll need it ongoing. Obviously, board members need it ongoing just to connect with, with our meetings, even when we've been successful. So, thank you guys so much, both, um, both teams, uh, Gabe and Kathleen, for getting, getting our teachers as up to speed as they can in such a short period of time. Teacher training starts right after college, and it takes usually a year and a half, and we did it in a week and a half. So it's close. Thank you. Again, uh, thank you too. Um, I guess, John, my, my final question to you is, I mean, we heard it from both Kathleen, um, we heard it from uh, Gabe, we've heard it a number of times about the number of involvement of teachers in terms of the development and the rolling of this out. Uh, could you give us a rough estimate? We know that there we have extraordinary TOSAs, but you talk about, uh, Jenna talked about bringing in some of the past TOSAs. Can you, can you give us an idea of how many teachers were involved in, in really working this through? Yeah, so for sure our TOSA teams um, have, have been involved um, very closely with um, both from an ed tech perspective as well as a um, curriculum and instruction perspective have been very involved um, both uh, with Gabe and Kathleen but also in reaching out to teachers um, uh, that they work with at the different sites that they're assigned to throughout the year um, and have been, been able to bring up back some of that input in order to um, support the development of this. Kenneth, right off the right out of the gates um, recognizing the enormity of the need to um, source out some support to sites uh, for the, the tech piece. Um, she's going to have to give you exact numbers of the number of her fellows that stepped forward, but it was pretty, it was significant. Um, I want to say 15 to 18 and maybe even more than that, Jenneth, um, you know, stepped forward and said, what can we do to help? And Jenneth was able to organize that group. So Jenneth, I don't know if you have an exact number of the um, uh, fellows, ed tech fellows that supported. Yeah, really. Right now we have 34 fellows, but we also we we make up 
there's about, there's, that's including our coaches, so fellows and coaches, and then we have about eight uh, that were um, alumni. And so over 40, they all just, we, we called them into a Zoom session early, it was optional, and they all got on the Zoom session with us, and we put a doc together, and every single one of them started making screencasts, sharing things they'd already done, and then we asked who's comfortable doing these trainings. So they, they piggybacked off of uh, Melissa and Martha and watched them do the trainings, and then they just took took it. Like, it was amazing, and we were not were not even one minute you know, concerned that they weren't doing the best job. Um, they are really an extension of ed tech and I'm grateful to have them. Great. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Okay, moving on. So I want to be real quick with, um, uh, to get to the uh, principals and give you some firsthand accounts of, of what they're supporting, what they're seeing at their sites. Um, really kind of a repeat at secondary from what you heard from, from Gabe and Kathleen where the focus um, has been on connecting um, to the best extent that, that we can have our teachers connect with kids and, and reconnect kids to kids, um, but also um, really taking the opportunity to step back, look at some of the you know uh, learning that had already been taught, um, and go a little bit deeper with kids um, while really focusing on once again um, accounting for access uh, as well as uh, you know the content to move it forward. So that come. Um, the 13th of April when we get back from spring break. Um, they've got their systems in place um, to move the learning forward based off of where their kids were and where they were instructionally uh, when this all started uh, on the 13th of March. Um, I think it's important at this point though that we have some first-hand accounts uh, to hear from our principals who are you know boots on the ground, um, not right next to the teachers, uh, working through some issues um, and, and have them share with you um, you know, some of the things that, that they are witnessing and some of the feedback they're getting from their communities um, as we move uh, this distance learning forward. So I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Shannon Bray, Dr. Dwayne Cox, Dr. DePauli Potness, and Kathy Scott uh, to share some of their experiences up to this point um, in preparation, uh, you know, to continue with the distance learning. So I'm going to ask Dr. Bray to go ahead and kick us off and then I'll go to Dr. Cox. Hi, good evening, uh, board members and Dr. Navarro and cabinet members. Uh, it is quite an honor to speak to all of you. Um, I just want to refocus everybody and say it was 18 days ago that we closed our campuses. 18 days. And the team that I work with, I could not be more proud to be a part of this organization because I think, in fact, I know that we have done the best we can for kids and been working seven days a week. My colleagues and I have uh, continually been networking. I think that this is truly bringing us closer together than ever before. And we are just gonna be even a much more powerful team through this. But to give you a firsthand account, of course, um, as we navigated through this, there were concerns uh, being brought forth. I know some board members heard from some of my parents at my site, from uh, parents within our CDM zone, and continually do hear. But I will tell you, I'm here to report that I have a great number of such positive emails from parents, community members, teachers, students, it's been just unbelievable, the uh, networking that's taken place. And just to give you uh, some feedback, just to put it all into perspective, thinking about this, that after just 18 days ago, closing our campuses, within 10 days, we had devices into kids' hands, third through 12th grade. We made sure that we were having devices there. And teachers were being trained within days. And, um, Teachers were connecting within 12 days, eight school days, but 12 days, because we all know we are working seven days a week right now. They had their connection with students. I'm very proud to say, I've talked with all of my CDM colleagues and several other colleagues at other sites that we are working tirelessly to make sure every single student is connected. And we are working hard and we're working multiple hours. I was very proud when I went in to roll for the first day of Zoom at Anderson, we had all but 13 kids connect on that first day. 
which was just um, so exciting. And all of the teachers reached out to those that didn't connect to find out why. So these are things that are going on. We talked today extensively about these systems that we need to put in place to make sure that we are connecting with all kids, that all kids need that connection. We're using a variety of tools to connect with kids. We're using Flipgrid and Seesaw, Screencastify for uh, elementary teachers that the primary ones are sending Screencastifies every morning with calendars and uh, daily today is and all of that kind of things and what you're supposed to schedules for learning for the day. They're using, I'm so thankful to Jenneth and her team for putting that toolkit um, together with all those wonderful links for the parents. They, it was a lot, I know. So my teachers have taken that and they've kind of narrowed it down to, okay, try this link, try that link. Cause there's, you know, sometimes parents see this whole uh, menu and they just don't know where to go. So um, we've been able to kind of help with that. Teachers are using Kahoot, Google Classrooms, they're reading aloud. Um, but most of all, the most important thing for our kids, because this is a time they are never going to forget as long as they live. I know I won't, and none of us will. But that social emotional piece is huge. I have teachers having pet parades on, you know, they're showing their guinea pigs and their dogs. And just that social emotional piece, I mean, is huge for these kids because their world has been turned upside down. They're being, you know, staying inside. They're not seeing their friends. So for them to be able to see their classmates on Zoom is amazing. Teachers are actually doing even small groups because at the primary level, kinder, it's quite overwhelming sometimes to have 25 kids on there. So now they're scheduling smaller sessions with kids. And the great thing is that um, all my principal colleagues that I've talked with have created Google Forms where they know all of when the sessions are going on. So I'm virtually walking into classrooms like I do on campus into classrooms. Today I walked into seven classrooms and was able to see and connect with kids there. So there's a lot of great connection. And with that, all these connections, the, the amount of positive emails, you know, unfortunately those aren't the ones that board members receive, but I tell you this, the amount of positive emails is filling my inbox because of these connections that the teachers are making. So um, we're all learning together in this. Um, you know, we thought that adopting two new curriculums was a big challenge, but I tell you what, this is a pretty big measure and we are up for the challenge. And I think that we're just gonna be closer and stronger and better through the process. So like I said, I just um, can't be more proud to be with all of uh, the people that I work with. And I really see my teachers the collaboration is enormous. My collaboration with my CDM colleagues, we are in constant communication, constantly, and seven days a week. And just really, I think that that collaboration is just gonna benefit us. So thank you all so much for your support. And uh, again, we're gonna get through it. So Polly, are you next or Dwayne? Which one? Um, I have my hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Sorry. Yeah, because you, okay, got it. I just, I just want to uh, reassure Shannon that um, we know how difficult this whole crisis is personally and professionally, and we know how hard you are all working and. Um, and it's sad to me that many, well, few um, local people don't understand that. And, um, and it saddens me that um, you feel that you have to defend yourself when you don't, because you're doing a great job. Everybody at the district is doing a great job. And I'm just really um, sorry that more people don't understand what a crisis this is and how hard everyone is working for their children. So I thank you for your service and um, for all you're doing. And I'm sure most of your parents and children are pleased and understand this is a difficult time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michelle? Yes, I just want to explain um, express how distance learning has been going for me and my family since I've got the four kids at home. They are really happy to be connected to 
their teachers with Zoom, um, with their classmates. Um, you know, I joke that I have a bunch of introverts and I'm an extrovert and so they're in heaven and I'm like, let me out. But they're really um, having a hard time with being home all the time and not seeing their friends and not having a schedule. And um, the distance learning that they received has been really, really helpful for them, both just in feeling comfort comforted and then seeing what their teachers are up to. Um, we've had a really great experience and can't thank the teachers for enough for what they're doing because I know that a lot, you guys have kids at home too and you're trying to figure this all out. So thanks for everything you've done. Thank you. Any other comments before we move on to one of, I guess it's Dwayne is gonna be next. Dr. Cox. Okay, Dwayne, you're up. Good evening, it's a pleasure to speak this evening. Ms. Floor, is this okay? My, yeah, absolutely, perfect. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what Dr. Mishni and EdTech and really all of our district, a value we have is um, and was in the development of this, is that children would be able to connect with teachers. And that particularly as we roll this out, there'd be success. And there's been so much success and students definitely have been connecting with their teachers. Um, I'm not going to name all the programs that have gotten named a number of times, but really those programs like Zoom and, and so on, all these programs are tools for teachers. And they're tools that we want for teachers to have a really strong understanding of so that they can continue to teach the way they always did and they always done. They know their students well and so for them to have these tools and feel comfortable with them allows for them to continue the great work that they're already doing. And even in this short time, I think that's why I'm here this evening is to just share with you that there's been amazing things happening. And in this theme of connecting with kids, one of the messages has been that can, even in a digital environment or in a distance environment, Kids you need to have unique experiences or fun experiences. And you heard about a pet parade. I've, some of my teachers did a scavenger hunt in their house. Others make spirit days. So when the kids come on Zoom, they're in spirit. You know, they do some spirit activity together. But these are the kinds of things that are gonna be memorable for students. And we need to maintain that, just like that, that would happen on a regular school day. So what are the memorable things in a, in a digital platform that kids are gonna have. Um, while this, these connections are occurring though, teachers are also gaining the skills they'll need to have really effective instruction. And what does really effective instruction look like in a digital platform? And again, I need to know these tools well so that I can do that. So how do I do really good instruction, assess my students' learning, get an idea of what students are thinking, provide opportunity for my students to talk and collaborate among one another, just like you would do in a normal classroom. And so those are all things that are happening right now. Um, this week, like Mrs. Uh, Dr. Bray said, I was able to get into classrooms and see students um, with math problems that were grade level appropriate uh, word problems, and then students would talk about it and produce their work for the teacher, much like what they did in our standard classroom. So we are in an exciting place and I share this enthusiasm. I, I feel like I'm speaking on behalf of our teachers and administrators that we've been so supported by our district, so thank you. And I think we're in a place now where our teachers and administrators, all of us, are getting a vision of what it looks like to teach and to learn in a distance learning model. So thank you for this opportunity to speak this evening. Thank Dr. You. Cox, I just wanna say thank you too for your awesome Friday flag decks that you were doing virtually. And it was really cool to see too, the really, like I think it was a kindergarten class of kids that were on Zoom and were totally engaged. So thank you for helping lead Ray in that. Great, great. Any other Karen? Any questions? Michelle? Any other comments? Great. Sure. Remember, I have to do low tech hand. Um, I agree, totally agree, Ashley. I was watching Mrs. Flores at Davis with her Flores flyers, and she does her flag deck virtually also, and the cute backgrounds teachers are using, and it's, it's a learning curve. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition, nor did they expect coronavirus. And while 
it's a great opportunity to learn. <laughs> Miss Dr. Bray, absolutely. 18 days, instead of a year and a half of training, we did it in a week and a half. So it's spectacular what our teachers are doing. Was it easy? Absolutely not. Is it gonna stay easy? Nope, it's gonna be hard. But we've got the teachers that are just phenomenal and can do it. And they're led by principals that, that give them the support that they need. So I agree, thank you so much. And I think that there's, if there's one thing that's a commonality is this need of connections. And I think we can't forget about that loss of connections. And not only with our, our kiddos, but our parents have lost that sense of connection as well. Um, you know, they used to gather at flag decks and no longer can parents gather at flag decks. And so I think we need to, you know, think about how we can expand, you know, expand our support, not only our social emotional to our kiddos, but also to our families and our parents, whether there's, you know, group sessions that we can, you know, the, you know it's like the parents club, so to speak, at our schools, because they've lost the connection as well. And they're, um, they're struggling because they're, they're also feeling isolated. Um, they can't, they can't, you know, they can't meet with their, their friends, kids. Um, so they're all, we're all struggling with this. It's, ki it's killing me at least for having to be cooped up in my household and not speak to anybody. Uh, okay, great. Uh, moving on. I think, Dipali, are you next? I am next. And I just want to say what an honor it is to be able to speak and see all of you. It actually makes me so <laughs> incredibly happy. I think you all know that I'm an extrovert. So this is like a struggle for me right now. Exactly. <laughs> um, but I just want to say just how exceptionally proud I am um, of our NMUSD and our T-Winkle community for handling distance learning with such grit and grace. And while I know that there is so much learning to do and so much more planning that needs to be done. I think it's important to relish in some of our successes. And so um, as educators, I think we all know that it's so important to have that growth mindset and this idea of being lifelong learners and then also this idea of moving forward together. And I think that while this is such um, an unfortunate situation, I think that there's so much opportunity for us um, as a community and globally, globally to really move forward together. And so um, for T-Winkle specifically, we created a schedule in which um, our teachers were accessing our students two times a week instructionally, and then they were open for students for office hours as well, two times a week. And just as Dr. Bray was sharing the different platforms that have been utilized by teachers, we also are using those similarly. Um, but I do want to share, because I know that there's only three minutes and I haven't had that much time to talk in a while, so I'll try to keep it to my <laughs> I wanted to share um, an account from a teacher directly who wrote um, a blurb for me to really share just what the teachers are going through, the students are going through to really bring back that human aspect of, of all of this. So give me one second as I pull it up. And um, here it goes. So... Uh, though we have, we still have future adjustments to make, our first week of, our week one of distance learning was successful. The staff bonded together to practice technology, create enrichment lessons, and offer moral support as we transition to online learning. Teachers spent most of the week um, connecting with students, outlining modes of communication, and answering student questions. Both Screencastify and Zoom have been lifesavers this week. Screencastify has allowed us to support students by visually explaining assignments and online class organization. Zoom provided a vital opportunity for students to digitally connect face-to-face, -face, or at least with audio. Though many students asked questions in Google Classroom, we used our Zoom time to clarify these questions and allow for feedback about the work. Through my Zoom meeting, I am happy to report that each day, students are feeling more confident. Many express that they like going to school in their pajamas, but miss that face-to-face -face social interaction. Zoom has provided that chance. Students are appreciative that they are connecting with their families and have been catching up on much needed sleep. During week one, a few students shared that they are overwhelmed trying to balance home life responsibilities um, with school, but their teacher teams have offered solutions to assist them in organizing their schedules and finding the best times for breaks. 
And so I really think that that really brings it home, right? Is that our, our students are, are really dealing with so much, even at the home level, um, taking care of siblings, um, tending to families. And um, I think about our teachers who are also doing some of the same things simultaneously, tending to families, and then also simultaneously teaching and committed to their learning. And um, I don't know if you guys see my Twitter, but my hashtag that I keep posting is stronger together. And I do think that we are just that. And so I am, I personally, um, since I've been a part of this district, November 6, 2017, have been so indebted to all of our district leadership for all of their support, continued support, um, lending their ears at really any time um, to, to process things, work things through so that we can take a systematic approach to providing the best education and opportunities for our students. So I just want to once again say thank you for inviting me to this meeting and let me speak on behalf of T. Winkle. Um, it's a true honor. Thank you, Dipali. And then Kathy. Mrs. Hey, Kathy. everyone. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and it is a privilege to be here this evening and speak uh, on behalf of our colleagues as Shannon and Duane and Polly have already shared. Uh, I don't want to repeat a lot of, of what's been said, but I ditto everything. I think the one thing, again, I do want to repeat is what a great district we have. You as a board uh, can be very proud of the people that you oversee. Uh, I, we, I don't think any of us could ask for better support uh, all the way from our superintendent through every division. It's like uh, John Drake said, it's taking all of us working together and coordinating all the divisions when you have a district this size and 20,000 students and you're trying to meet all their needs. And so there's lots of wheels and parts turning. And I think in the short amount of time that we've all talked about, it's been, we've done a masterful job. It's not been perfect. There's been some messiness to it, and but we've corrected. And we're kind of learning as we go, and uh, and then we don't know what we don't know, so that makes it even more challenging. Uh, but we're getting there, and um, and it's been the thing I've seen from the teacher side, and I've heard from the teachers, uh, they feel like they are learning and, and improving their own craft. It can be pretty comfortable if you've been teaching 25, 30, 15 years in the classroom. You kind of get in your habits and habits have been broken uh, by this coronavirus and new, and new teaching and teachers are learning new strategies. And so I do appreciate, and I think our teachers would say this if they could speak to you tonight, they appreciate the slow rollout we had. So they had a chance to take material they had already taught, they already had the lesson, they already had PowerPoints and put that into online learning and experiment and reaching out and connecting with kids to making sure that kids were connecting back with them. Uh, just so you know, the one thing that it's kind of been mentioned, but I want you to be fully aware. Uh, all of the principals, we're collecting the data this week on kids that are AWOL or MIA that, that no teachers had a contact with. And then we're going to start doing some intensive connection with them to see if we can locate where they are. We know many kids have had to leave and go live with other relatives. Uh, we families that they took a quick break right at the first of the school closure and have gotten stuck in other locations. Uh, so we're trying to mitigate those students and their absence. And I think by the time spring break is over, everybody should be back and we should be, uh, it'll be easier to access, for students to access uh, all these new platforms. Uh, and, um, but I think our teachers are doing a great job. Um, one thing I do think the kids have commented, they like the flexibility of, uh, and especially when it's like Screencastify or Google Classroom where teachers can teach and record it and then they can go back and listen to it two or three times or they can listen to it at their convenience rather than being locked into a set time. I think Dr. Navarro made a very good point that we need to help our parents understand that uh, online learning is three components. It's uh, uh, synchronous is one piece but it's probably the smaller piece than the asynchronous and then the independent learning. And, uh, and I think uh, that we'll begin to put all that, that will start flowing much easier as everybody gets in a rhythm uh, with that. One thing we've noticed for the high school students, I think the loss of extracurricular, that's hard to duplicate online, impossible. That's been a huge hit for the kids, uh, all their extracurricular activities. I think that's why they're sleeping so much and they're getting so much rest because I think they've realized how much of their time was consumed by extracurriculars. And, that, and not that that's bad, but I think it's been a huge shift in, and that's been the biggest change and loss for them. Um, and so with that, I just thank you guys for this opportunity. Uh, Ms. Matoya. 
I, it made me, Mrs. Scott, it made me think the PTA and everyone wanted late starts so badly. We've got late starts now. Yeah. Those start <laughs> 10, 11 o'clock sometimes yeah. and in their pajamas and they can get lots of sleep. So PTA should be happy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Mrs. Yelsey? Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I know it may sound to the principal sometimes like we may be critical because we hear a lot of complaints and I think that's what people do. They tend to call us and complain about what issues are. But I think parents, and it's been described here by Dr. Navarro, Kathy went over it, um, the three components of learning because I think all parents have to understand that these are very unprecedented and unusual times. This is something we've never been through before. And we've all talked to people who were at home with two parents working on their laptops at a table. There may be one to three or four other kids, Michelle knows this, with, with her family all finding space to work on their laptops. And it's very anxiety driven. Um, people's tensions are running high. And I think after a period of time where parents can settle down, and see that their kids are engaged, it, things will calm down. Um, I'm hoping that at least, because I think parents have to look at the bigger picture. And um, like Shannon started out with, it's been 18 days. Um, I know to everybody, it probably seems like a year already that we've been doing this, and that's not the case. And I really think that all of us need to put that in perspective, because it's, you know, there's bigger issues out there that people should be concerned about. I mean, I'm sitting here right now and I got a text today saying a friend of mine's sister died today and in New York. And you know, though that's happening all around for people. And I think that kind of thing we have to put in perspective. Thank you. Mrs. Bartow, do you have any questions, comments? No, I was gonna say something similar to Karen. I keep telling people the whole world is going through this together now. It's not like we're behind because everyone's behind. The whole world's kind of on pause and we're all just trying to do the best that we can to kind of keep our sanity, keep our education. So um, keeping that community is great. And um, I'm sure that the clubs and PTAs and things will figure out ways to build more community via Zoom as I've started to see happening as the, the longer this goes on. And I think that will help everybody to just sort of you know, it's it's not forever, but it's our new normal for now. Exactly. Uh, can, can I say oh, yeah. one more thing? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to compliment Jenneth. Uh, I know Zoom was kind of the hot new uh, platform. And so some teachers jumped to it right at the beginning and sort of got burned because there was some misuse of it. And Jenneth's department got on it quickly and put in the parameters and the restrictions. And I've gotten really positive feedback from teachers that are using Zoom that it's made all the difference in the world and, uh, and feel like it's a very powerful platform. And some teachers are still not there yet. So uh, they're dabbling with pre-recording uh, you know, pre their lectures and then connecting with kids via email and text. But, uh, Mrs. Black, do you have anything? No, I had to plug in my computer because I didn't realize we've been here discussing this for this long because <laughs> I was losing power. But um, but I agree with what's all been said. And, and the feedback that I'm getting is predominantly positive. You know, like Michelle said, they're, you know, our neighbors and community are networking with themselves. They're not waiting for us, you know, to do, you know, to make everything wonderful. You know, they they understand that. So I just appreciate all the hard work. It's overwhelming listening to, you know, all the different divisions and everybody's role in this and our principals, kudos to you <laughs> that you still come back every day and that you're here tonight. We really appreciate that. So, um, so I'm just very grateful, board member. I've never experienced anything like this, you know, since 9-11 and, uh, and that was eerie enough. So um, I just am very worried for all of us. And I'm grateful that we have a community that's, you know, coming together. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Mrs. Snell, any comments? Um, no, ditto what everybody said. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it. Ms. Natoye, comments? Okay. 
Ashley? Um, I'm just thankful as somebody who this is what my degree is in digital teaching and learning. I'm excited to actually see what the possibilities that come out of this are. Um, and so I'm really hopeful that we're going to have so many more teachers trained um, and so many students that will like a blended education. So I'm really excited too that there are some positives academically that will come out of this. So thank you. It'll truly be a united uh, district when we have opportunities that kids can take from classes from any from all over the district when um, if they're not being offered. Um, and I think I have this question is really to Russell and to and to John is that for those teachers that are just not you know that are struggling with and Jenneth also with 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 distance learning at is there is there a mechanism by which they there's a, a can be a team approach where teachers who are really um, tech savvy tech what we would call the tech native and really comfortable with this can actually are we allowing teachers to have the freedom to team teach um, at the high school level or even at the elementary school level um, and and really um, play to their strengths is that an ability is do we have that capability yeah, I think, I think we, we both have that capability and that luxury right now. I mean, part of what um, you heard from our principals is they're actually dropping into these virtual classrooms um, and seeing what's happening. And um, while it's, it's not evaluative, it's coming from a supportive place, um, they're learning alongside their teachers. And, and even some of them are taking opportunities to team teach with their teachers. And if they're seeing a teacher reach out or that may need some help, they're connecting those with on their campus that are maybe stronger in utilization of some of these technologies. Um, and and uh, so, so absolutely, all of those pieces are, are possibilities and luxuries I think that we have in this environment. Great, we have some other principals that are on here. Uh, Russell, uh, do you have some more? Actually, uh, there's one more piece to our report. Great. Now that we've uh, covered uh, distance learning. And we would be absolutely remiss if we did not acknowledge the support staff, uh, special education uh, supports for our, yeah. our students who need that, and, uh, and also uh, the student care and support uh, that we're providing to families. So we want to wrap up our report first with Candy Barella and then with Phil D'Agostino on support for our students and families. Candy. Thank you, Russell, and it's nice to have a chat with you folks this evening. I want to begin by talking about or just applauding the efforts of Jenneth and her team and Awesome and his team and the Ed Division TOSAs because they have led the way for all of us. And I appreciate how inclusive they've been. The last board meeting we were at, we talked about the inclusive activities that we're doing in special ed with general ed, and it's just been mirrored through this whole process. As uh, our special ed TOSAs have been working alongside the general ed TOSAs, adding layers of accommodations and modifications to those templates that they were talking about. Our mod severe TOSAs, Celeste, has been working with our, our teachers who teach our more um, impacted students with alternate curriculum, working with them on the unique learning systems um, curriculum that we use. She's holding regular office hours for those teachers. Our speech language pathologists and occupational therapists are providing services as best they can on students' IEPs. They're participating with teachers. They're, as I'm calling it, they're zooming in. They're pushing in on their lessons, um, providing speech services or occupational support. Our psychologists are touching base with their students, providing the counseling that they need. And I think that's just critical. And Phil's going to talk more about that. Our coordinators are meeting weekly with their special education teams, touching base, problem solving different issues. We're having Java-like group. Uh, Zoom meetings. I'm, I'm, dream, I'm dreaming in Zoom anymore. There's so much Zooming going on. But we're meeting, we're meeting regularly with our, our speech group, our site group, our elementary teachers, our secondary teachers, our preschool teachers, making sure that everyone's needs are being met. And we're getting a lot of positive experiences. The teachers have been sharing some really neat stories of, of the engagement with students. They're learning a lot of new skills and techniques. They're finding these new resources. And we've got quite a resource library that's been um, built, built up in our shared Google Doc. Um, but overall, we're just trying to provide, you know, the, the reasonable, appropriate, and accessible services for our special education students alongside with what uh, general education has led the way with. 
So it's a work in progress like everyone else is doing. And I think the teachers are looking forward to having some um, original instruction going on that they haven't had for the last few weeks. I think that's, it's really gonna set them free a lot more than they've been the last couple of weeks, so. And I'm gonna turn it over now to my partner in student services, Dr. Phil. <laughs> Thank you, Candy. Uh, it's good to see everyone. Um, President Floor, Vice President Yelsey, board members, Dr. Navarro, and Executive Cabinet, I hope you and all your loved ones are well. Uh, at the onset of this closure, we immediately went to work to develop systems that will allow us to continue our mission in this unprecedented uh, dynamic to support families in the areas of mental health, wellness, and social and emotional supports. Probably, uh, I think the most significant um, thing we've put together very quickly was the development of our care and concern line, which allows parents to leave a message and then get a personalized response from student services personnel. Uh, we are also using the care and support line to connect parents to site administrative teams as needed. And since this is a public forum, um, the care and support line is 714-424-7538. Just wanna make sure that gets out there. Uh, we are also creating support resources for parents developed by our behavior specialists. They have also collaborated on additional resources that will be available on the district's webpage, we hope as soon as tomorrow. Uh, some of the, the resources our behavior specialists have put together include how to deal with your child's anxiety or self-care for parents. And it will be linked under the school closure link on the top of the district's main splash page as well as under resources, quick link sections, and we will have it linked, of course, on the student services page. We're also working uh, through our school, uh, our, I apologize, our child welfare and attendance investigator, Vlad Anderson, he is on the job, and we are collaborating with other agencies to investigate concerns of child neglect or abuse. We've already had seven CWA issues that we've investigated or taken action on since the school closure. Continuation of individual group counseling services for both general education and special education students is continuing through our social workers and our behavior specialists. Ongoing collaboration and coordination of services with our community alliance partners, like securing hotspots from Project Hope Alliance, resources from the Hogue Department of Community Health, um, as well as I, I think we're really proud of the work that One Recovery has done to step up under Lynn Peterson. I think that's one of our best examples of a community alliance partner in action. Uh, they launched an online community on, on March 13th. Um, there have been 22 opportunities since then for students and parents to collect, connect online. Uh, they've created online experiences in place of the physical drop-ins. And parents currently have three opportunities per week to connect. Uh, Lynn is also working directly with the assistant principals to provide campus and student specific support and connection when needed. And we are also continuing in, uh, in, our, in our mission to serve students in terms of both accountability and support. Uh, we are still continuing to expect students to uh, follow through on the exchange for suspension uh, meetings if they entered into behavior contracts uh, to mitigate suspension days on their record by going to one meetings. Lynn told me today that they've had over 300 individual students in attendance, and they've averaged about 15 to 20 teens in each of their, um, in each of their meetings, their virtual meetings. Over 6,000 views have occurred uh, with the One Recovery meetings. Uh, in closing, just a few of the many initiatives we're working on as we move forward, uh, developing a workflow for the new enrollment of students. That's gonna be kind of tricky for us, but we're, we're confident we've got something uh, that's gonna be operationalized um, as early as later this week. We're also operationalizing a system for tracking attendance and participation in distance learning. We're creating a workflow for a referral for students who develop a need for social, emotional, or behavioral counseling. Uh, that would be new referrals of new students as we continue down this road. And a referral process for risk assessments and threat assessments as our teachers and our behavior specialists and others engage with students who they feel are presenting with some kind of crisis. Um, really proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder with our colleague divisions in this orchestrated effort to support students and families in this time of need. I would be remiss if I didn't also give a shout out to my coordinators, 
Sarah Coley, Angela Allen Hess, and Angela Castellanos. Our social workers, our behavior specialists, the Welcome Center team and the Student Records team, and all the administrative assistants in the Student Services Division, Rosie, Jackie, and Sarah Piddington. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share and serve. Stay well. Thank you. Questions, comments? We miss you, Phil. Miss you all too, very much. Uh, any comments? Uh, Ashley, we'll start with you. Any questions or comments? Nope, that was a really great update. I'm glad to hear a lot of those things that are happening. Thanks. Uh, Ms. Metoyer? I echo it. What we're doing to reach out at a time when kids are begging for us and families are desperately wanting it, it's hard for all of us. And to remote, remote hugs are just not the same. And, and that's what I equate it to. So good job, well done and well reported. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Snell? Question? Uh, whoops. Ditto, Phil. You, as usual, um, are thinking uh, several steps ahead, as all of our administrators and cabinet are, and um, thank you for um, all that you do. Right. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Bartow? No, thank you very, very much. Um, I guess one thing I thought of that we can maybe put on that resource sheet is um, the access for first responders to emergency child care. Um, I'm sure that they know, but I feel like it's just one more resource as this goes on that there that that's available. So, um, yeah. The why? Definitely, I'll I'll make a note of that. Mrs. Yelsey. Uh, yeah, just Phil. I we saw we got the email from um, Lynn from one today, just talking about what she was doing, and I don't. She works with some schools, but not all. Is there a way on the district website we could put something so anybody could join in? Because there are so many sessions for different age groups and girls. She has some for girls, some for boys alone. Um, I think it should be publicized a little more to other people around the district who may want to join in on this. I will, I will work on that and get that out there this week. Uh, Mrs. Black? Any comments? Thanks for all your work, Phil, and your department. Let everybody know we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Phil, is there a counter for um, elementary? Is there is there something like One Recovery or some sort of uh, program and an opportunity for for our 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 K six kiddos? So, you know, I would just go back to the, um, the resources that our behavior specialists developed. Um, that one of the things that they are doing is going to be a regular story time, read aloud. Uh, there's a PowerPoint that's gonna be put out on that. Um, there, there, while there isn't a elementary version of the One Recovery Program, I think when we, when we have the um, support, resource support systems on the website, that have been developed by the behavior specialists, uh, that will be a great source of su ongoing support to our elementary parents and students. And we plan to uh, freshen up uh, and, and cycle new topics through those resources uh, that our behavior specialists will be creating on a regular basis. Also, I've asked the behavior specialists, while we only have two of them, they have, they are expanding their outreach to other, to, to all the elementary principals, so that if there are students in crisis or what have you, um, as we develop a workflow for how to manage um, those different levels, uh, in, in secondary, um, it, it, there, there's a lot more um, strategic personnel like school community facilitators and counselors that, that I'm sure we will probably be bringing to bear at some point, but at the elementary level, it, it, that those principles are really um, on their own islands, and so we are um, we're proud that we're going to be supporting them with behavior specialist support uh, as a direct outreach um, uh, to them. Well, and also the Hogue Healthy Center for Living is still open, and so that's a resource too for elementary families that if they have a child that needs to talk to somebody outside their family they can always call and set that up as well. And that's a really trusted resource that 
the, the district uses widely. So that's a resource for parents as well. Um, Russell, is that the end? I have two comments that we have two comments from from on this agenda item. So, yes, uh, I was going to remind you of that if you had not remembered. Uh, but uh, I, I know Dr. Navarro would like to have the last word on this topic. So I don't know if you want to do the, the comments first. We'll do the comments. Doctor, I'll give you the, the last word, Dr. Navarro. So I'll let you have, um, uh, Dana, would you like to read the last two comments we have? Put you off, off mute. Off, off mute. Okay, Dana, unmute yourself. There you go. Can't hear you. She's saying she can unmute herself. You need to unmute her. I can't unmute her. Okay, somebody go. unmuted me. Thank you. Thanks for okay. asking. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay, so this community input, um, this member is Eric um, Bosrup, I believe. Um, has the board contemplated canceling spring break in an effort to make up part of the past week? Please explain the board's position on this. And then with just about every other district leveraging video conferencing to extend the in-classroom experience, why does CDM only make this optional for its teachers? And then his third question is, is the distance learning program certified? and validated as a curriculum that will satisfy requirements to complete the current grade level. And then our second um, um, community member is Cynthia Blackwell. And, um, and she is, is a team in place ready to work on new curriculum for next fall that reflects the abbreviated school year. Are all families receiving notifications via US mail? And that's our final. We did have two other questions, but one was from Mike, but he didn't put a comment, and also one from Marta Zuniga, and she also didn't put a, um, a comment, and we weren't sure exactly, so we tried to reach out to them. So okay. with that, Dr. Navarro, um, turn it back over to you for final comments on this item. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, you know, it's uh, really quite uh, an honor to sit here and listen to all of these incredibly hardworking people and to understand that, you know, they represent hundreds of others uh, that are working together to do what we can under these trying times to provide the best instructional uh, program uh, available to students. And I, I sometimes uh, there are individuals for some reason who want to create divisions. And I don't think this is a time for division. I think when you look at it and you heard uh, about our, our fellows, our tech fellows, our math fellows, our TOSAs, those are all teachers. Those are all teachers. And those are teachers we work closely with. We're all educators. We're all here because we wanna make a difference in every kid's life. And we wanna change their trajectory to a place that's going to get them to a higher level then they maybe even anticipated themselves or maybe their families anticipated or maybe their families wanted them there and we want to help them get there. So we're educators. We're not that set, we're not that different from each other. There are issues that are coming from the state and the federal government. And those are level one decisions where we just have to go follow through with those orders. But then there's this working together. And I think what you heard is there's a lot of working together and there's a lot of, 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 latitude being given right now to get our teams to a place where we all are doing quality work. We all are maximizing video conferencing. We're all maximizing uh, screencasting, that we're doing some work so that kids can work in groups and independently, as well as with the teacher and away from the teacher. Um, so I think uh, what the glue here is, is the commitment of all of us as educators that are going to make this work. And I and, and maybe the board, maybe you don't all have certificates to teach, but you're all educators. You're leading, you're, you're, the, you're the, uh, the stewards of this district uh, and you are educators. And so I think we'll have to remember we're a lot more alike than we are different. And it's gonna be our likeness that's gonna get us to a point where we're really gonna provide students with an enriching experience 
and we're going to keep them together, keep them connected, and make sure that they don't fall onto the dark side and make sure that their experiences are energizing, fun, and, uh, and tickle their curiosity. So I'm really proud of our team and I look forward to our next stage. Uh, Mrs. Floor, you're on mute. Thank you all again for um, that. We're not finished with our meeting, unfortunately. Um, but I just want to um, commend all of you for, uh, for your participation and involvement in, in this report. It was great. There are a number of principals that are on this, on part of the panelists um, and, and members that were there that didn't have an opportunity to comment. But it was great information. Um, and we know um, from the board's perspective, we know how hard you've been working because we're getting uh, email updates from Dr. Navarro and staff at 1130 at night sometimes, um, every day. So uh, we are really very grateful to all of you. So uh, moving on, we have our informal reports because the district is moving forward in spite of being surrounded by this, but we do have the general district. So Dr. Navarro, you want to any other comments that you'd like to make? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you a short update. Uh, we uh, have co completed the input portion of the thought exchange. We're now working on disaggregating the data and we'll be able to come to the board uh, in a while after we've uh, looked at the, or we've gotten the uh, data disaggregated for you to look at and then uh, for us to discuss options and, and direction. Did we get a lot of involvement from the outside community? Do we have, I mean, I think one of the things I would love to hear too with that is if we, if we had a lot of students, that's awesome because they've been using Thought Exchange, but also people in the outside public that maybe don't know what Thought Exchange is, don't know the process, are so we when, looking at their options as well? So when, when you look at the, uh, the, the Thought Exchange, you'll see the demographic data that that is uh, provided there. Okay. And it does break it down into different categories. Okay. Can we have? Do we have an idea though? If we got maybe five percent from outside of the community? Oh, I don't know the data that well yet. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Mrs. Floor, you're uh, you're. Uh, Actually, I know that we got over four hundred and thirteen um, comments. Um, actual individual people and tons how many fourteen thousand responses and stars or whatever um but i'm sure they're going to work on all that data uh so i have to go down let's see the next one would be leona's not here so it would be uh tim holcomb good evening all well um not uh, there's all kinds of things going on as you can imagine uh particularly in our information technology department and uh, uh our uh, maintenance and operations department uh as well you know that our uh facilities department uh continues to be managing our projects and uh hopefully we'll have some updates on a few of those coming up uh at one of your very next board meetings great Mr. Trader. Good evening. It's uh, good to be here with you today. Um, just wanted to share with you the, the financial impact of COVID-19 is going to be substantial. And uh, the state has been responsive, uh, at least for the 1920 year. They have uh, issued uh, uh, $17.37 per ADA, which comes to $341,704. On the expense side, though, we have already spent uh, $292,885 in responding to COVID-19, and we're just getting started. Um, that's been, uh, if you want to break down there, software has been uh, $10,400. Cleaning and health supplies has been $110,408. Information technology has been $165,100 and then specialized cleaning equipment of $6,976. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, going down the line, let's see, it's uh, Dr. I actually Sir. have a question. Sure. But I, I'm sorry, I couldn't raise my hand fast enough. And I um, see Michelle <laughs> has one too. 
Yeah, I, I'm just wondering, um, with all this added expense and we don't even, we can't really anticipate what's going to happen in the next six months, is it um, a possibility? Is it, are we thinking about the possibility of postponing some of our projects that haven't started yet? Uh, i.e. air conditioning? I'll let Tim handle that. <laughs> well, you're the money man. I want to know, can we uh, afford to do this? I mean, there's certain projects like the Estancia Theater where the money is there and it is can only be spent on the Estancia Theater because it's part of um, Measure F. Uh, but there are some projects that we're taking um, out of um, funds that we got, um, redistribu redistribution funds uh, from the state. And I'm just wondering, uh, are we, are you concerned? Are we looking at some things, uh, some of these projects that may have to be postponed so we don't go? Yeah. It's a very good question, Mrs. Snell. Um, and the answer is that w the projects that you had approved, uh, the budgets for the projects, uh, we're, we're still confident that those projects can proceed. Uh, there were other projects that uh, were at the very earliest stages where you had authorized initial schematic designs uh, that would set budgets. And those projects uh, are currently sitting, uh, waiting for us to sort this out a little bit better. But the projects that you had already committed budgets um, are, are proceeding forward. And we have understood that the air conditioning project was a priority of the board. And so at this point, uh, we are moving forward with that project um, as we would have uh, if this virus had not occurred. Can we afford to move forward with this project? Are you confident? Um, yes. Can, yes. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I know you work for him, but I'd love to see <laughs> you shaking your head yes, too. <laughs> okay. okay. Great. Mrs. Barto? Yes. Um, so, two questions and sort of a Jeff and Tim question. Um, do we have an updated timeline for all of these projects? I imagine some things are gonna change um, with school closures, like maybe we could do the pool at Harbor earlier since people aren't using it, that sort of thing. Have we thought about how our timeline is gonna change? Um, have we thought about the Ensign project? All those projects that we had kind of lined up to do between spring break and summer um, could be switched around, could save money, could we could renegotiate good contracts with the contractors who aren't gonna be working on them for a bit. Can you fill me in on where we are on all those things? Yes, um, well, uh, I, can, I can make an effort because things are uh, still somewhat in flux with regard to construction. There were, in fact, over the last couple of weeks, some questions being asked um, in the industry uh, about whether or not contractors proceeding with school projects uh, were in fact exempt from the stay-at-home order or not exempt from the stay-at-home order. And uh, we had some um, conversations with attorneys and with different contractors about their interests in continuing with the projects that were currently under construction. And uh, we're pleased that all of the current projects uh, that were under construction are continuing, uh, as far as I know, on their schedules. But we we're having a lot of conversations and even that uh, has been a challenge as everyone works, including our consultants and our contractors to uh, follow the state's orders to uh, work from home uh, wherever possible and to maintain uh, good hygiene and good social distancing. So it's something that we're looking at and uh, trying to get a better understanding of all of the impacts. I don't have a complete update uh, for you at this point. I know in fact in, um, I believe it was yesterday's call with my directors, uh, Mr. Bidnick and Ms. Zaresny were looking at 
uh, the schedules for some of those projects and trying to determine whether or not um, moving some of them up would be advantageous to us and how that might work. And so uh, I believe Mr. Bidnick has one that uh, was scheduled to start here uh, within the next couple of weeks that he's actually able to move up uh, just a little bit because students uh, aren't present at campus. Uh, but we're really trying to understand that as well as we can to uh, make sure that we communicate what's going on at the sites uh, with these projects so that there's not a question of uh, who are these people that are on our sites and why are they there. Yeah, I knew we had a, a lot of projects scheduled for spring break, which is kind of a moot point at this point since we're not using the sites. Um, so if, yeah, when you get a chance, if you could get us that report specifically on Ensign, but also Harbor, just sort of anything that's rearranged because we had so many things scheduled for next week. Yes, we'll put that together for you all. I just want to uh, uh, thank the board for reminding us to always be nimble uh, in this time. And so as uh, this pandemic uh, progresses, there may be different orders in the next two weeks that may change everything. So we're trying to be nimble and uh, protect uh, taxpayer dollars and uh, make sure that, that we're not uh, misspending or not spending it wisely uh, at, during this uh, very challenging time. Uh, you never know, another order may come down where no construction workers can work. And so that will, that will uh, obviously impact everything we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Sir. No report. Okay. Dr. Barmeister. Yeah, I have a, a piece of information that I think will make you happy. On Friday at T. Winkle, we will be having a virtual Freedom Committee presentation. Oh, so we're the Freedom Committee will be moving forward. I talked to Denise Weiland this morning. She's very excited and she's gonna work with the veterans uh, to be able to do Zoom presentations for our classes. And so they will go on as scheduled. And we know um, what a great program that is uh, for our kids and for our teachers and for our veterans. They enjoy it as well. So that program will continue. Can you send us a link, Kurt? Can you send uh, sure. us a link? Absolutely. Great, thank you. Uh, Ms. Jockham. Oh no, Russell, sorry, Russell, I skipped you. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we've used a lot of time tonight and uh, just, just thank you for allowing us to go into that very deep uh, comprehensive report. I wasn't exaggerating when I said a deep comprehensive report. And, and I, I'm also very proud of the work of everybody in this district and our district overall. Dr. Jockham. Good evening. Uh, so you got to hear from each of my directors this evening, uh, which was fabulous. And you can tell that they, um, they have a heart and a passion for the work they do, as does everyone else that has spoken up this evening. Uh, so I just wanted to, um, also mention the, the work of executive cabinet, because we've talked about expanded, all these other people, but you know we are also meeting at least three times a day remotely to stay on top of this. And we appreciate the board's support, uh, Dr. Navarro's support in, in the work that we're doing, uh, trying to give direction. And as, as uh, Russell was kind of saying earlier, we are trying to be nimble, but you know boy howdy they change things every minute it makes it a little bit difficult so um we just thank you for your support and we continue to to move forward with our work great um there is one person i'm going to call up um mainly because she's basically behind the scenes but not really and that's our communications director um and have have her give us an update on um what's going on with the community because she has been sending out a tremendous amount of, of you know stuff to our community as well as adriana so you want to give us a brief update uh annette i know i put you on the spot okay can you guys hear me <laughs> okay hi everyone annette franco public relations officer for our school district so um our small but mighty office has been on top of communicating all of the things that everyone has shared with you today. So we have a red emergency alert banner on our district webpage, as well as the homepage of all of our schools. So that's where you can go for the latest information. That 
takes you to a news item that is also on the news feed of the district and all school websites. You'll find lots of information there, including our latest information from today, the action you took to extend distance learning. Uh, all of the news is there, as well as the distance learning toolkit and the student service resources, some of which, which were mentioned today. So all of the things you hear from our staff that's going out, our department is responsible for making sure that gets out to the public in various ways. So the website really has a lot of uh, resources and we'll be continuing to update that as new information becomes available, such as the new website that Student Services is working on. In addition to that, we also communicate regularly with staff and parents. So we have multiple emails to staff regarding updates on distance learning and the school dismissal. We also communicate with parents via email, phone calls, and sometimes text messages as well. And we're obviously on social media trying to share all of the information that's going on throughout all of our schools. Great, thank you. And John, I forgot you. You, you, oh, you, are, you are in the corner, so. Yeah, that's quite all right. Uh, my report will stand as uh, the report that happened earlier. And just thank you for all of your uh, continued support. Okay, great. So we're moving on to the consent calendar. I, I just want to uh, compliment Annette and her team. Um, I was looking on my uh, face on my uh, uh, messages as I was listening to this to the meeting, and I could not believe Adriana has already posted uh -huh. the update. Um, to um, what we decided tonight about extending the um, distance learning. So you guys are on it. Thank you. I know you're so busy and uh, appreciate um, you all you do to get the information out. I was super impressed. I had to mute my mic for all the calls coming in telling me about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. You're welcome. Sorry, not oh, sure. <laughs> no. We all appreciate you. Terrific. Okay, so moving on to consent calendar. Um, I know that there were some questions, Mrs. Uh, I believe everyone else's questions were answered. Uh, Ms. Anderson, did you wanna ask your questions? Did you get answers to those? Um, yes, I got some answers. I have a follow-up question for pretty much all of them. So I will email Tim after this to follow up. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Okay, moving on. So uh, may I have a motion to accept the consent calendar? So moved. Ms. Matoyer, is there a second? Second. Uh, Ms. Anderson, a roll call please. Ms. Floor? Yes. Ms. Yelsey? Yes. Ms. Black? Yes. Ms. Bartow? Yes. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Ms. Snell? Yes. Ms. Matoye? Yes. Great. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, moving on to board member reports. Anybody have any comments, questions, uh, reports? I'm just going to read that superintendent thing for my legislative report. Um, okay. Move on. We'll move on to 17 then, and you want to go ahead and do that, Ms. Bartow? Okay, I have a report as well. Oh, I do. Terrific. So, Ms. Bartow, you want to do yours, and then we'll have Ms. Snell do hers, and um, Ms. Matoyer do hers last. Perfect. All right, let me bring it up. All right, so this is from the California Department of Education, Tony Thurman, State Superintendent, March 31st, 2020. Dear fellow superintendents, I'm writing to you regarding the current status of schools in California. As you know, we continue to deal with the impacts of the coronavirus and how those impacts make it unsafe for our students to be served on school campuses at this time. The need for safety through social distancing warrants that we continue to keep our school campuses close to students during this pandemic. Due to the current safety concerns and needs for ongoing social distancing, it currently appears that our students will not be able to return to school campuses before the end of the year. This is in no way to suggest that school is over for the year, but rather we should put all efforts into strengthening our delivery of education through distance learning. We acknowledge that students only being able to be served through distance learning creates hardship for some students, 
families, and educators. However, we are urging a safety first approach out of an abundance of caution. As such, we urge that all school districts in California move towards and or continue to strengthen their distance learning programs and opportunities for our students. We believe that this sustains the safety of our students and families, provides consistency across schools in the state, and provides our districts and educators with clarity and the ability to plan for delivering education for the rest of the school year through a distance learning model. The California Department of Education is prepared to assist the distance learning efforts of our school districts. In that respect, CDE has provided guidance and resources on distance learning and will continue to enhance that guidance. CDE will also provide webinars and training and is forging public-private partnerships with leaders in technology and the philanthropic sector to help expand home devices and internet access where possible and where available resources and donations allow. Please call our office if we can provide additional assistance to you in any way. We know that we are dealing with a never seen before health crisis that challenges us in many ways. But we also believe that as it relates to educating California students, we must rise to meet that challenge, that we are stronger together, and that if we work together, we can do more together for all of our students. Sincerely, Tony Thurmond, State Superintendent of Public Instruction. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Snell. Yes, I just wanted to bring up um, again um, the um, re re uh, reinstating the student teachers. Um, I have had more communications from teachers and we have gotten some um, letters or emails, they're not letters anymore, emails from um, interested um, community members. Um, I know uh, Russell is working on this to um, get them back involved in getting their hours and also assisting our, the, our teachers in um, putting together um, curriculum and assisting in the distance learning. Um, I think it'd be pretty, it seems like it'd be pretty easy just to have them uh, plugged in to Zoom and be able to um, um, work with the, the master teachers they're working with to um, assist them in what they need to do. So I'm, I'm just wondering if we're any closer to doing that. Um, and uh, I, I also, one of the letters, I don't know if this is true, um, it was said that um, other districts are, um, are keeping their student teachers on and um, at least the ones through UCI. And so I'm just wondering if we're any closer to making that happen. I know uh, you have a lot of priorities, but this seems like, of course, uh, you know, uh, a non-complicated fix. Right, Ms. Snell, uh, we are making progress. And just want you to know that uh, uh, we're working closely with the uh, Human Resources Department. I've actually seen some uh, progress in that area to work out some parameters. And I think you hit it right on the head that we uh, had to prioritize where we focus our time and energy. We're getting to a place where we can work on that, uh, create some uh, reasonable parameters, and continue to support our student teachers in the progress of them uh, getting ready to uh, become teachers. And, and in many cases, uh, right in our own district. So we are working on that. We are making progress, but we had to prioritize. Okay, wonderful. I'm, um, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Um, and Ms. Matoye? Thank you. Um, the Costa Mesa Ch Chamber of Commerce Ed Committee met yesterday via um, virtual meetings. And I'd first like to thank Dr. Dave Martinez, who chimed in and represented the principals. We are at this time of year are typically planning a big party held at Volcom and celebrating our Les Miller honorees, which are our, our valedictorian type graduates, our outstanding scholars and athletes from the community colleges in and colleges in Costa Mesa and our high schools in Costa Mesa. So I just wanted to let everyone know that the chamber is working on being able to honor the students somehow. We probably won't get our party, but we'll figure out something that we can do. The committee is still working. The community um, 
business members that are still participating are just positive and doing a wonderful job. So I just wanted to update everyone that that committee is still moving forward. Um, the other thing is now that we have time on our hands, I went to the Red Cross and ask them, you know, even though I'm, I'm a stay at home person, can I still donate blood or platelets? And they said, absolutely. I found out from going to the website that I have a rare platelet um, and it's very much in desire for cancer patients. So I went, oh, huh. So Thursday I'll be, dry, I'll be my, doing my first platelet donation to see how that works. And I recommend that if any of you have time or possibilities to talk to the Red Cross and donate blood. Great. Is that virtual? Is that That's a virtual? <laughs> virtual, virtual donation. Um, as far as that, if I could piggyback on that, that's what I wanted to share as well. Locally in Costa Mesa, there, um, there was one on Friday, a blood drive at St. Andrews, and there are two this week. And I guess across Orange County, 3,000 3, other blood drives in the past like few months have gone canceled. This is at locations that they can space everyone six feet apart and they have a protocol in place. So um, there's one on Thursday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Lighthouse Community Church and one on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the crossing. And people just go sign up um, my period scbloodbank.org or they can just show up. Um, because we're in desperate need in our area um, for blood. The phone number is 844-380-5220. So I wanted to piggyback on what Shar was saying. Uh, great, and um, the presidents, we will be having our president's meeting. It's been rescheduled for March 2nd. So the president of NMFT, uh, Dr. Dowdy, uh, Pam Saunders, president of CSEA, uh, and Dr. Navarro, uh, Russell Lee Sung, and myself will be meeting um, at 11 o'clock on April, April on 2nd. April, on April 2nd, yes. Right um, after your birthday. Happy after, birthday tomorrow. Yes, yes. I just got an email saying that a great April Fool's joke is they're going to have parents are supposed to wake their kids up, tell them to hurry up, get ready. They got an email that school's starting tomorrow and hurry up and brush your teeth and get to school. Oh, April Fool's. Um, just wanted to let you know that uh, it's already out about us um, hitting the news regarding our extension. Um, Placentia Yorba Linda is calling it uh, Dr. Uh, Tony Thurman's a personal uh, reflection. Uh, so, um, but most of the people in our area are wanting it, thank thanking us for just ripping the bandaid off and being open and honest with them. Um, so we're moving forward on, on, on that. Um, anything else? Any pressing other issues? Nothing. Can, can we move to adjourn the meeting? You can. I move that we adjourn our virtual meeting. Um, I Second. question that though. Had we finished closed? Have we finished closed? Did we finish closed? Yes. I believe we, we did. Okay, then I move that we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Second. Uh, and then uh, please make sure that your calendars are cleared for potential update on uh, Friday uh, at 8 a.m., correct? Okay, perfect. All right, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Sherry, did you get that? Yes, I did, thank you. All right, terrific. Thank you all.